Before we begin our first press conference of the afternoon, uh, the Kansas locker room will be open for a 40 minute period after the student athletes and uh, while the student athletes and coach are getting interviewed. The uh, reminders of if you have a Zoom question, please raise your hand and we will get, Mallory will get to you. Recording of this press conference on cell phone or camera is prohibited. As a courtesy to our student athletes, fellow media members, please silence your cell phones. And once you have a question, please, our microphone holders, raise your hand, state your name, affiliation. We're coming to you if you have a follow up, please advise at that time. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, welcome our student athletes to my immediate right, Kevin McCuller and guard Joseph Yesifu. So questions for our student athletes, please. We're going to go on the right side, okay. Scotty Bordelon with WholeHogSports.com in Arkansas. I guess for both of you, just impressions, uh, first impressions of Arkansas after getting a look at them. Kevin, first. Uh, yeah, Arkansas is a really great team. Um, you know, they're a very athletic team. Um, you know, have some long guys and, um, you know, some explosive athletes. Um, you know, they like to get up and down, and they're a very good team. Uh, kind of piggybacking what he's saying, they're very athletic uh, defensively and even offensively. Um, he's got to be ready for them. Other questions on on the aisle? Go ahead. Hey, guys. Uh, Bob Holt, Arkansas De Democrat Gazette. Um, what's it been like not having, you know, Coach Self here, you know, around you as usual? I mean, I guess he's been around, but not coaching the games. Not, how, how has it been with, with Coach Roberts? Um, yeah, um, Coach Self, he's been around us, um, you know, as well. Um, he's doing great. And, um, yeah, having um, Coach Rob, you know, pushing us, um, you know, um, it's no drop-off. Um, Coach Rob knows what he's doing. Um, he's another mirror image of Coach Self and what he's saying. And, um, you know, he, he gets us the game plan, and, and we go out there and execute. Joseph, anything else to add? All right, John, be right with uh, Kev said again. Uh, he's a mirror image of a, a Coach Self. Um, and expectations don't change. Um, he's got to uh, be ready. We're going to go very back. I'm gonna, go ahead, sir. Uh, Todd Richardson, ESPN Arkansas. Kevin, you competed against the Razorbacks two years ago in the NCAA tournament. I think Devo was the only player on that team that actually played you guys that night. What, what do you remember about that game? And what do you specifically remember about him? Um, yeah, that's been a while ago. Um, I don't remember too much about it, but I remember it was a good game. Uh, it came down to a last, like, second shot or, or something like that. And um, yeah, it was a great environment. Um, we played him at Butler, and it was like the Sweet 16. Um, but, yeah, um, Devo, he's a great player. Um, you know, he's a, he's a great guard, and it'll be fun to match up against Arkansas again. Okay, we're going to go to the aisle right here. Thanks. Hey, guys, Scott Reese, KCTV5, Kansas City. Um, Playing in the Big 12, you obviously play against a lot of big-time talent over the course of the year. And I know you can appreciate what Arkansas brings to the table. I'm just wondering, what is it like playing in a game on this stage with so much NBA talent on the floor as we're going to see tomorrow? Start with Joseph first. Um, of course, we've seen a lot of that from uh, the Big 12. Um, it, like I said, uh, Arkansas has a bunch of explosive athletes. Um, we got to learn how to defend them. I mean, he's got to lock in on them. Kevin? Uh, yeah, um, like you said, um, they have a bunch of athletes, high caliber guys. Um, they can put the ball in the hole at a high rate and guard. Um, you know, playing in the Big 12, I feel like uh, we've been battle tested. Um, then playing in the SEC, they've been battle tested. Um, so it's going to be a great matchup and it should be fun. Stay on the side, go ahead. Kevin, I know you said before the last game of your back spasms went away. Did they flare up at all during the, the game last night? Uh, yeah, nah, I'm feeling good, man. I'm um, feeling the best I've felt. Um, credit to the training staff here at KU for getting me back right. And, um, yeah, I just felt good out there being being out there and competing with my brothers. Other questions in the back? Brendan Dworzynski, WIBW Radio in Topeka. Joe, this one's for you. During the tournament, more and more people talk about how depth doesn't matter, and really you need five, maybe a six-man rotation. That's all you need. Since you've been first off the bench, kind of leading that bench unit last few weeks, really for the majority of the season, how important to you is bench depth when you get to tournament time? Um, it's a lot, uh, very important, um, getting the guys rest, because it's, it's a long tournament. Um, we're trying to go three weeks in the tournament, but we're taking uh, each game um, um, as it is. Um, and I feel like uh, we just got to get these guys rest as much as we can. We're going to stay on that same side, and then we'll come up to the front here. Chris Lazarino with Kansas Alumni. Uh, Kevin, could you offer a little bit of reflection on uh, the journey you've had this year, presumably 
this is the point in the year really why you chose to finish things out at Kansas? You know, thoughts about you know, what, what's happened for you so far and now that you're in the middle of all this? Um, yeah, um, playing in games like this is why I came to Kansas. Um, you know, um, and this is why I came here. Um, you know, it's been a great journey so far. Um, you know, just taking it day by day and just enjoying the little things on the way. Um, you know, uh, it's been great going out here and competing with the team and playing and playing amongst these great guys on our team as well. So it's been fun. There you go, oh. right in front there. Gary Bedore, Casey Starr. Um, Kevin, what does it bring to the team when Joe is hot like yesterday when he comes in and hits a couple threes? And I got to follow up. Um, it's huge. Um, when Joe comes in and knocks shots down, um, that gives us momentum. Um, you know, he's instant offense off the bench, and uh, he's, he's a bulldog on defense. Um, you know, that's his role, and uh, he's been doing a great job at his role. Do you guys, uh, they start four guards. Is it going to be similar teams going at it? Um, yeah, um, you know, we um, get that line up quite often against different teams that we play. Um, you know, there's going to be four guards out there at a time, um, at any time of the game, most of the time. So, um, um, yeah, it's going to be a fun matchup. Same side and lay on. Uh, hey, guys. Um, you know, obviously, you guys know the number one seeds are number one seeds for a reason because you had great seasons. But, you know, the, 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 the number ones get upset every once in a while. You know, it's, it's not uncommon for, for one of them to get beaten the second round. Just – as the number one seed who's had a great season, you guys are heavily favored. But how, how do you see that matchup, knowing that a number eight or a number nine, depending on who you're playing, could, could, can be a dangerous second-round team? And then do you see Arkansas that way? Start with Joe first. Um, we just got to be prepared every game. Um, anybody could get upset. Um, we just got to uh, take it game by game, uh, focus in on a uh, scout, and just lock in. We can't take anybody lightly in this tournament. Um, yeah, um, it's March Madness for a reason. Um, anybody can get beat, and everybody's in a tournament for a reason. Uh, it really doesn't matter your seed um, once you get here. Um, you know, you just got to worry about your next matchup and go out there and play. Other questions? Please raise your hand. We're going to go on the, this side, then we'll come over to you, sir. Uh, this one for Joseph. Kevin, I know you weren't on the team last year, but you guys won in the national championship. How do you continue to do the little things that it takes to get back to that point? How does that hunger stay? Uh, it, it, that goes to leadership. Um, you know, we got a lot of returning guys, uh, Jay Will and Juan, for one. Uh, they, they've they really been uh, just you know, doing that all the whole summer, just leading us um, and getting us prepared for this moment. You know, we've seen the big stage, so we're, we'll be ready. And Kev, Kev has been part of that, too. So, on the, yeah, yeah. Look, Looking at you guys' schedule, y'all had a few Saturday, Monday turnarounds. Uh, how might that – having that experience help you guys in this tournament setting? Kevin? Um, yeah, it's huge. Um, playing on, you know, Saturday games and then getting ready and getting prepared one day prep, uh, playing on Big Monday um, in the season gets you ready for the tournament. Um, you know, um, you know, you got to do a, a good job of, you know, learning from your snakes from the last game, uh, but putting that behind you and, and kind of, you know, looking forward and getting ready quick, um, taking care of your body and doing all the little things you got to do. Joe, anything there? Uh, everything we can say, he's 100% ready. <laughs> Other questions? Again, uh, please uh, give your name and affiliation. Okay. Uh, uh, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Um, you, Jalen's a big 12 player of the year, All-American. Just wondering, what is it that makes him so good? What do you guys really like about his game? Joe? Uh, for me, it's his work ethic. You know, uh, behind closed door, he works his butt off. And um, I see that e each and every day. Um, constantly watching film with our, our coaches. And he's ju he just a great leader overall. So th that's what I would say, say about him. Kevin? Um, yeah, I just say the little things that he does. Um, it's not all about what people see about him scoring the ball at a high rate or his stats. Um, just affecting the game in different ways and, and being so versatile, um, being a leader on the bench, um, timeouts, different things like that, um, being an on-court coach. Um, that's the biggest thing I see. Still have 10 minutes left in this press conference here. I'm going to go to the front row here. What games uh, have you guys been watching – any impressions of the other games, and uh, have you had a lot of free time, Kevin? Um, yeah, I've been watching a bunch of games. Um, really, it's no surprise. It's, um, you know, it's March Madness. That's so the best time of the year. Um, you know, anybody can get beat, like I said earlier. Um, it's been fun, though. Um, it's nothing like just, you know, sitting around watching games all day um, when we're not playing. Um, so it's, it's been a blessing. It's been fun.
Joe. Um, like you said, um, it's the best time of the year. You know, everybody, it's a blessing to be here. Uh, not a lot of uh, teams could say they've been here, so it's, it's definitely been fun watching these games. Any other questions out there? Got one in the back row again. For either one of you guys, Jalen has talked so much this year about how you know this team has championship pedigree, and you've been there, and you've been down in big situations, come back, you've been in tough environments. Does the thought ever creep in during game preparation or in games that this could be it, this could be the last game of the year? Is it ever kind of a, a nervousness almost, or is it just business as usual when you get into a tough spot, which could certainly happen in a matchup like this one? Joe? Um De definitely nervousness is there, um, but I feel like that's needed, you know, to, for us to stay focused. You know, obviously we don't want this to be our last practice. We don't want uh, the next game to be our last game. So just locking in and just being prepared for each and every moment. Kevin? Yeah, just piggybacking off of what Joe said. Um, just got to um, trust your work that you put in, um, trust your preparation every day, and uh, just go out there and play every game like it's your last game. Um, you know, when you just want to be able to walk off that court and know you left everything on there. Joseph, what's it like for you playing postseeps and play kind of where you initially started your college career? Um, you know, coming from Drake, uh, we had to he had to make another Missouri uh, Valley Conference. Um, but here, you know, we're, we're just kind of knowing that we're going to make the tournament, but we still had to work hard. We still had to uphold what uh, others brought to this team. So it's not really a difference. I still know that I got to, you know, play hard, um, do what I got to do and um, play my role. Go ahead. Chris Lazarus on Kansas alumni. Kevin, could uh, picking up on on the question about um, about Jalen, could you offer some insights on uh, to him away from the game? From our perspective, we only see him here, right? He seems like a a mature young guy who's just really growing up over this year, over the last you know however many eighteen. He's really growing up fast. He seems like he's pretty calm, collected. Um, what's he like away from the court? Um, yeah, um, yeah, Jalen's real calm and collective. Uh, that's my roommate. Um, he's probably the cleanest dude I've ever um, been around. Uh, I can't leave nothing out without him getting on me. So, um, but yeah, um, he's real mature. Um, you know, going back to knowing him since high school, how far he's came, um, it's been a huge step for him uh, when he was at Denton Geyer. Uh, just seeing the steps he's took, I'm just super proud of him and um, blessed to be able to play my last year with him. Switch sides. Guys, uh, Dave Campbell, Associated Press. What? What is the number one way that Coach Roberts is the mirror image of Coach Self? Start with Kevin. Um, I would just say his passion and, and his will to win um, and wanting to win, um, how competitive he is. Um, his pregame speeches get you pretty pumped up. I say that. Um, makes you want to go out there and run through a brick wall sometimes. <laughs> he gets you turned up. So um, uh, Coach Rob, he's, I would say just his, uh, his grit and just uh, how bad he wants to win. Joe? Uh, yeah, he's very competitive. Uh, you guys see him in practice. Uh, like he, he, he has the will to win, just like Coach Self. Um, and that's all I can say about Coach Rob. Any other remaining questions? We're going to have – okay, on the final question be right over here. Karen, there we go. I know you guys have probably gone through some film study already, but do you guys compete against any of these players in maybe AAU ball or high school at all? I know you've got some Texas connect connections, Kevin, so I didn't know if there was any passovers there. Um, no, I've never played any of these guys other than um, Devo um, back in the tournament um, in the Sweet 16 uh, about two years ago. Um, but, yeah, they have a bunch of Texas kids, um, a lot of, lot of high-ranked high guys that came out of high school from Texas. Um, so it would be fun to match up with guys uh, making it out of that state and, um, you know, having a name. Joe, uh, who have I played? I played uh Ricky and uh at Wichita when I was at Drake. We 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 squeaked by on that one, but uh, it's definitely a great group of guys. Um, drive picks like, like you guys said, and we just got to be ready. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much again. The Kansas locker room is open, and we'll have uh, Kansas coach with us shortly. Thank you. All right, thank you.
we have Coach Roberts up here shortly again. The uh, satellite coordinates, Galaxy 17, transponder 16A, downlink frequency 12006.5V. And again, transcripts of the press conferences today are provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly following the conclusion of each press conference. Hammond Communications will post a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. one between Xavier and Kennesaw State, so 12 seconds left for one point or so. As soon as that's over, Coach Bean. This time, we're pleased to be joined by Kansas assistant coach Norm Roberts to coach uh, your evaluation of your opponent tomorrow. Arkansas is a, a terrific program. Obviously, they've got some of the best athletes in the country. They're very long and athletic, play extremely fast. They got uh, three to four potential NBA guys. And um, Nick Smith is, is terrific. Jordan Walsh is a great defender. Davis is a terrific point guard. And, Council can is maybe as good of an athlete as you're going to see in the country, and and then Black is a kid that plays multiple positions. So so uh, they got depth, they got size, and they have great athletic ability. If you ever take questions, please raise your hand. Coming to this side on the aisle. Hey, Norm. Uh, Bob Holt, I'm a Democrat. Is that? How you doing? Um, I guess, well, what's this been like for you the last few games, filling in for Coach Self? How's he doing? And is, do you expect to, to be leading the team again tomorrow? Kind of what's what's the update on that? Well, Coach is doing well. It's it's a day-to-day -day, uh, situation with him and, and everything, but he's doing good. He was in practice uh, with our guys just a little while ago and, and coached them. So we'll see what happens. Stay on this side right behind him. Okay. Up front here, we got Eric on the corner. Yeah, Eric Olson with the Associated Press. Norm, uh, just one other question on Bill. 
uh, how I, could you kind of walk us through just the the communication process that you guys go through with him and the players, and also how often you meet with him while you're here in Des Moines, uh, going over stuff, and and just kind of what the nuts and bolts of that are. Well, it's the same that we always do. You know, we we have scout report. We meet uh, probably two times a night and uh, go over different scenarios and what we want to do and how he wants us to play both offensively and defensively. And so we haven't had any extra meetings in in those things. And as a staff, we always uh, collaborate and work together and everybody has input on what we think would be the uh, best situation for us. Hi, Norm. David Lawrence, Jayhawk Radio. Uh, Can you talk about the comparison with any Big 12 team that you see in Arkansas? That's tough. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't think anybody in the country has as many athletes as Arkansas has. Uh, um, we've had different teams in our league that, that, are, that are pretty athletic. Baylor's athletic, but they're not as tall, long. West Virginia's athletic, but they're really long, but they're not as fast. So we played against a combination of those things. Probably the closest one would be Texas. Texas probably has as many athletes in length that's similar to Arkansas. With Dewan and Kevin, uh, two of the best defenders around, just just talk about you know taking them to the fight against these great athletes. Well, it's going to be important that we play team defense. It can't just be one guy um, because they're very good at putting it on the bounce and attacking the basket. So. We've got to be in gaps. We've got to help each other. We've got to communicate quite a bit. And, and then once the shot is taken, more importantly, we've got to go rebound it. You know, they do a great job of crashing the glass. And so we've got to be, uh, do a good job in rotation rebounding. Hey, Coach. Scott Reese, KCTV5. Uh, I have a follow-up as well. I'm sure you've poured over a season's worth of Arkansas tape at this point. I'm just curious. They looked like a Final Four team back in Maui in December, and then they – kind of hit the skids late in the season. Did you notice anything that was different about them the last third of the season, maybe that they weren't doing, that they did do early on? No, not not that. I, I know Nick Smith was out uh, with an injury, and they've dealt with other injuries, just like everybody in the country has. And they play in a great league in the SEC. So, you know, everybody's going to have, uh, you know, ups and downs in their league. We did too. So they're playing very good basketball right now. Um, and I know they're an extremely competitive team. So we're going to have to be very, very focused and competitive and aggressive throughout the whole game. And maybe just a word uh, from, from a viewer standpoint at what a treat this game is going to be with, as you allude to, all the NBA talent that's going to be on the floor on both sides. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it'll be up and down. It'll be an up and down game, and, and they're always in attack mode. We want to be in that same same mode throughout the game. Uh, it's going to come down to getting stops. It's going to come down to defense and rebounding the basketball. Stay on the same side. Go ahead, sir. Uh, Adam Kilgore with the Washington Post. Um, dur- during the games, are, are you making decisions like your own way, how, how you usually coach a game, or are you at all trying to like mimic and think like – uh, Bill Self, when, when you're out there, like how, what's the balance there if there is one? Well, if you say mimic and think like we've been together for almost 25 years, so we probably do finish each other's sentences in, 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 in basketball terms. But, but uh, no, I do try to think of what he would want to do. Uh, you know, if it's a situation of getting the ball inside, if it's a situation of trapping the ball screen, where we would want to attack. But those things we talk about a lot before the game even begins on how we want to attack, what we want to do, how we want to play the game. So I just revisit that in my head and, and then coach that way. Okay, we're going to switch sides. Go ahead, sir. Coach Chris Lazzarino with Kansas Alumni. I ask you a question about Jalen, if I might. Um, perhaps um, off the court, how much – you know, you have so many years as an educator and a coach and, and helping young men grow up. He seems, from our perspective, to has grown up, you know, matured as much as anybody we've seen maybe in recent years. Could you just talk about his development as a young man away from the game? Yeah, he he's he's tremendous. He is he has been one of the best leaders we've ever had, and and one of the most competitive kids we've ever had. And you know, everybody knows Jalen went through a situation, but not I've never seen a kid handle a situation like he did and take full accountability. Um, we, we talk about when that situation happened, usually a kid addresses the team and says, I'm sorry. He didn't do that. 
he addressed the team for 10 to 15 minutes saying, I'm taking total responsibility. I screwed up here. This shouldn't happen. I'm not going to be a distraction to the team. I mean, he went through a whole thing on his own, and he really took accountability, and, and he's grown up so much. He cares so much about Kansas. He cares so much about his teammates, and, and that's reflective every day when he comes to practice and when he's around. Remote corner over here. Abby Dodge, KSHB 41. You compared Arkansas to Texas in your last appearance. You did not come up with the win. Does that worry you at all for tomorrow's game? Well, well, Arkansas is quick and athletic just like Texas, and we played against that all, all year. So we know what we need to do. We know we need to be keyed up. We know that we need to uh, be very active in what we do. And, you know, the main thing for us is we, we can't let people get comfortable. We let them, when you let somebody get comfortable, they're going to play very well. So we have to make them uncomfortable, and, and there's ways that we can do that. And, and then we've got to be able to get out and transition and get easy looks for ourselves. Switch sides on the aisle. Coach John Neighbors, 103.7 The Buzz. I know you talk a lot about Arkansas's team, but just as coach to coach, Eric Musselman, just what's your impression of him, his style, philosophy, just his overall approach to the game? Uh, Coach Muss is, is is terrific. He's done a great job at Arkansas. Uh, he's an attack mode guy. Everybody knows that. He's a very passionate guy. Obviously, you know, his, his family history uh, and coaching and, and those things. So he's done a fabulous start, job at Arkansas. And Norm, Bob Holt again from the Arkansas Democrat. He said, I had a two-part if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, first off, you know, obviously you guys are number one seed for a reason, just like all the others. And the number one seeds win most of the time, but they don't always win. Mm -hmm. how, how how do you see a, a one eight matchup against a team like you said that's as athletic as in the country? How, how dangerous a team do you do you see Arkansas as being? I think when you get in the NCAA tournament, everybody's dangerous. Every team is really good. You know, Howard gave us all they could early on in the game, and then we were able to get some some breathing room from them. But they're a very good basketball team. You know, I said this yesterday, you're playing against champions. You're playing against guys that had really, really good seasons that know how to win. And, you know, Arkansas is a team that comes from a great conference, the SEC. They know how to play in big games. They know what it's like to win big. So we knew the 8-9 game, be it Arkansas or Illinois, was going to be a tough battle. And you have to beat tough teams, and, and you're going to have tough games in order to win a national championship. And we knew that last year when we did it. You no, know, Creighton was a, a bear of a game for us last year, and, and this year will be the same. So you just got to go out and execute. I wanted to ask you about a couple of their guys. Um, Ricky Council, you alluded to, mm -hmm. you know, his, he's so athletic the way he dunks. He had a nice bounce back game after not playing real well in Nashville at their SC tournament. Mm -hmm. well, I wonder what you think of him, his overall game, and then Makai Mitchell, number 15 for them. He's had some pretty good games here of late in the postseason. I wonder what your thoughts are on him. Well, Rick, Ricky is an explosive athlete. I mean, he, his first step is, is ridiculously quick, and, and he's explosive to the rim, but he also can make shots. He, he, he's a really, really good player, and he's had a great year for them. Um, Mitchell uh, and his brother, uh, they've always been good players. they got great hands. They know how to screen. They know how to play pinch posts. They know how to attack the glass, and, and they make an impact on the game defensively by walling up and blocking shots. So... They've also both had a great year there at Arkansas. Hey, Norm. Uh, Eric Olson with the Associated Press again. I uh, want to ask you uh, about Grady, and are you uh, aware of his, his mom's basketball prowess uh, from her high school and college days, and is that any topic of conversation around the team? Well, not around the team, but with me and Grady, he knows that his mom's the best player in the house. So <laughs> we know all that, and his mom was a terrific player at Iowa State, and and, and I think that's helped Grady a lot as a player. You know, the, you know, when you're coaching Grady and talking to him about different things, you know, his mom knows what's going on. She knows when he's playing well and when he's not and when he's doing the things he's supposed to do. So she's been a joy to be around, and she's, she's great with him and keeping his head level so, as well as his dad, Bart. Have another five minutes in the press conference here. Other questions? Okay, we're going to go opposite side. Coach Scotty Bordelon with WholeHogSports.com in Arkansas. You mentioned Anthony Black earlier, how he can play multiple positions. Could you maybe expound on his game and kind of what's jumped out and, and prep on him? Well, the one thing about Anthony, he's always been a great passer, always been a great passer. But now his body's even stronger than it was coming out of high school. 
He's explosive getting to the basket. Uh, he's become a very good defender as well. And, you know, there's no doubt that he's got an NBA career ahead of him. And, you know, he's got a great basketball IQ. On the aisle. Go ahead. Hey, Coach. Todd Richardson, ESPN, Arkansas. Back to Grady Dick. Uh, I know he opens up the floor completely for you guys offensively. Have you ever seen someone get off a jump shot as quick as he does consistently? He's pretty good at it. I'm sure these guys have gotten the shot off quicker. But, you know, the thing about Grady is, uh, you know, he's tall, being 6'8", so he's already got the ball high up already, and he can hit his hands quickly and he can get it off quickly. And I'm sure that Arkansas is going to run him off the line and not let him have easy looks, and he's going to have to do a good job of moving without the ball. But, you know, Grady is as prepared of a shooter uh, in college as a freshman as – I've ever been around. He's terrific in that way. Yeah, right. Got the mic right there, sir. Gary Bedore, Casey Starr. Um, Norm, how important is Ernest for tomorrow, and where do you see his ceiling and how he's progressed? And I got another one. Well, Ern Ernest is real important because of his length. You know, he gives us size. You know, he doesn't give us the scoring ability that KJ does, but he gives us more size there. He gives us the ability to, to block shots and protect the rim. And he's a great rim runner, uh, getting to the basket and catching lobs. So we're going to need his energy. We're, we're going to need his ability to rebound and protect the rim. Your two sons know basketball. Mm -hmm. They played it. Have they talked strategy with you during this period where you've been coaching? Are they here? And have they helped you? Well, they're not here. They're they're. Uh, uh, their mom is here, but they're not here. Uh, my one son is, you know, associate commissioner at the Mountain West, so he's worried about San Diego State moving on, doing his job. And then uh, my youngest boy um, actually works for us at uh, at Kansas. He works in the McClendon Initiative, and he's working on doing his job there. But they text me all the time, and, and uh, they're really excited for us and hope that we can continue. Stay on the same side on the aisle. Yeah, Norm, uh, Bob Holt again, our Arkansas Democrat is that, you know, Nick Smith, he's pretty much listed as a lottery pick by everybody, and as you alluded to, he missed a lot of games, but um, he was averaging about, I think, 19-5 for about six games. Then the, the, the second half against stay in he shot one for 10, then yesterday was two for 10, so that, even I know that's three for 20. Um, not very good, but pretty uncharacteristic. Do you worry, like, wow, he ain't going to keep shooting like that, that uh, he's going to be a problem, you know, tomorrow? Well, he's, you know, Nick's a terrific player. We recruited Nick, so I've known Nick and his family and a terrific family. And, um, you know, Nick can really, really score the ball, but he affects the game in other ways too. You know, I mean, he can get in pass the lane. He's long. Um, he plays very, very aggressively. He can create for others as well. So he is a main focus. He is a guy that we can't let get off early against us because he, he could have a big night. We know that. Time for a couple more questions. Anybody else out there? Okay, that'll do it. Thank you very much, Coach. Best of luck tomorrow. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Okay. Again, transcripts are provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Hammond Communications will post a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. Thanks for joining us. We will start with Arkansas student-athletes at 2.20. 20-minute 20 session, 2.20. Coach Musselman will join us at 2.40.
We'll be starting our uh, second press conference of the day with Arkansas student athletes in the next three minutes. Pleased to be joined by members of the Arkansas basketball team. To my immediate right, forward Kamani Johnson. My far right, guard Jordan Walsh. Again, some uh, reminders as a courtesy to your fellow media members, coaches, and student athletes. Please silence your phone. Please provide your name and media affiliation. Raise your hand. Our microphone holders will come to you. If you have a follow-up question, please alert them. And if you're joining us on Zoom, please use raise hand function for questions. Recording of this press conference on cell phone or cameras is prohibited. Welcome, gentlemen. Our first question on the aisle to your left side. Go ahead. Jordan Kamani, I'm David Lawrence with the Jayhawk Radio. Uh, just, can you give us just a one-on-one on your team and uh, what you're about? And, and also, looking at your athleticism last night, it was kind of a shock to me to see that you lost four or five coming into the tournament. and. You know, what was maybe the issues that came up that to you where you weren't more successful with a higher seed coming in? Start with Kamani first. Um, I mean, yeah, we're, I mean, as a team, we're, we're pretty long, physical, and athletic. Uh, I think our struggles this year had a lot to do with the, you know, injuries kind of to our two best players and uh, TB and Nick Smith. And, uh, you know, we had to figure it out. Um, I think also, we let go of a lot of like big leads uh, in the second half within those games that you were talking about uh, that we had worked on. And um, last night, we kind of fixed that problem. Illinois kind of gave us a run in the later half, and, and we threw a couple punches back ourselves. So uh, I think our team grew up, um, in a sense, uh, during that game. But I mean, that's kind of been our story all year, and we fixed it last night. So, Jordan? Um, I feel like. You know, um, all the problems that we face, you know, before now were just tests of adversity. And, I mean, I feel like every team in the country goes through them. So I wouldn't say there was just, you know, any specific reasons to why it was just bad for us. But it was just adver adversity we all had to face. Um, you know, now that we've overcome that and now we're in the big dance, you know, you can see that we've, you know, adjusted our team and adjusted our mentality to, to deal with those things. And that's what we did last night and came out with a W. 
Hey, Jordan. Ty Richardson, ESPN, Arkansas. Well, one of the things I noticed following the Auburn win in the SEC tournament and then last night was just your excitement level. I saw you jumping up and down after the Auburn win, and I saw UNAB after he dunked it. I mean, what, what kind of emotional roller coaster was that as a true freshman to go through your first tournament wins? Um, you know, growing up as a kid, you always watch these games and you think to yourself, man, what if that was me who hit that shot? What if it was me who got that dunk? You know, you put yourself into the game and you really, you know, imagine, you know, what it's like for you to be there and for your family to be watching and for you to be playing with those teammates. And so to actually be there in person and in flesh doing those things and achieving achieving those goals that I set out for myself, you know, it's it's just a feeling that I can't explain. You know, there's nothing like March, and that was only the first round, so I can't imagine what it's going to be like, you know, on this upcoming road and what's next. But for me personally, just those wins alone were just something that made me so happy that I had nothing to do but just jump up and down and scream. Kamani, for you, I think one of the funniest things that happened yesterday is when you had two or three straight offensive rebounds, you put up the putback, and then Nick pushes you so hard <laughs> that you fall to the ground. And you get up, start laughing, he embraces you over the sidelines. Just kind of take us through that sequence and what you guys were talking about in the huddle. No, nah, I mean, um, one of my roles and jobs on this team is to always get extra possessions for the team. That's one of the things the coach uh, stressed to me all about. So, really, that was just me, you know, scrapping out, fighting for the board, getting the pushback. And <laughs> ironically, like the skinniest dude on the court pushed me over and knocked me over. So, it was just pretty funny. I told Nick I didn't realize how strong he was. So, it was kind of just a moment where we, uh, you know, we laughed and joked about it. It was pretty cool. And I think, like, that's just a tale to, like, what our team is right now. We're all happy for each other when we're making big plays. And, you know, um, we're kind of connected and together right now. And we're growing through March. So, uh, it's kind of the perfect combination for us right now. Other questions out there? Same role. Nick Springer, Rock Chalk Sports Talk, and Lawrence. I guess what jumped out to you guys about Kansas just at a first glance? What, what was the first thing you guys noticed about Kansas as a team? Kamani first. Um, I mean, they play four guards. Uh, their pace is really high, but um, I think we play at a fast pace too. Um, they could shoot the ball a lot, and they move the ball pretty well, but that, that's pretty much what I kind of noticed at a first glance. Jordan? Um, my first you know, notice, I noticed first was – know that they when they play and the team that they're playing against they're not really you know pressured to to make mistakes like every team's kind of like backed off kind of like letting them into their motion letting them in the offense letting them get set and do all this stuff but I feel like it's it's different when you come you know over to the SEC like dudes are going to push up on you full court like six nine wings six nine guards that are going to push up on you and, and make you turn the ball over so I feel like you know that's kind of like one place that we have an advantage to you know push up full court and you know, cause some uncomfortable feeling for them. David Lawrence again for Jayhawk Radio. Uh, Jordan, you've been described as uh, one of the best defenders on your team, so you probably know a little bit about Grady Dick and Jaden Wilson. Can you just give us a – and I, I realize you haven't been on the scout very long, but uh, uh, going into the game, what's some things in your head uh, that you're going to be thinking about in stopping those two? Um. You know, obviously they're they're both good players. Um, there's there's no hiding that. Um, you know, Jay will he you know he has he has experience and Gray he you know he's just a stud. So it's not going to be easy to stop them. But you know, as I'm learning through film, I'm, I'm noticing weaknesses. I'm noticing strengths. I'm noticing tendencies, and those things are kind of like what I pick up on to be able to you know get those extra uh, steals and stops that we need that can help us win the game. But it's it's not going to be easy. And I don't, I don't think it will be, but I feel like we, we have a chance for sure because, you know, our team and our coaching staff prepares us for every possibility that they could throw at us. So that's the most important part is just following the scouting report. And, and then you and I, I think uh, a couple of your teammates played with Grady in the McDonald's game. But what, what did you take away from watching Grady in that game that might lead you into how you're going to defend him here tomorrow? Yeah, um, with him and Jay Will, you know, um, I've played against Jay Will. Like I've seen him play a lot, you know, growing up, you know, in Dallas. Um, I got a lot of time, a lot of chances to be able to play him and you know do all that. And Grady, the, Grady, the same way. So I come with a little bit of you know experience in that regard. Obviously, their roles are different. Obviously, it's a different situation. But you know, I have, I, I may know a couple more moves that they do that you know our team doesn't know. So. You know, me being able to share that with our team to give them just a little bit more of an upper hand could make the whole difference in a game. 
And, and then lastly for me, you, you're taking on not only a number one seed, but the returning national champion team. Does that, is that like an extra big apple to pick off the tree, motivation, and going into tomorrow's game? Um, for, for sure. Um, you know, as like we were talking about in the back, you know, everybody loves a good underdog story. And, you know, it's right now it's everybody, you know, we're the underdog. So, you know, putting that, that extra pressure on us, I wouldn't even say it's pressure. It's just extra motivation to, to make us the one to go out there and, you know, really handle it up on them and show them that, you know, we're Arkansas. We're not seated as high. We're not known as much as well. But, like, we're here to put up a fight. And we, we're going to do that every night. Go ahead. Yeah, the microphone on the aisle, yeah. Go ahead. Got a rookie mic holder. I'm sorry. Uh, Kamani, for you, I know Dakari went several places in the NCAA tournament with Kentucky, and you had your own run the last two years, didn't play two years ago, was on the team last year. Uh, have you talked to your older brother just about going far in the NCAA tournament, maybe the experiences that you can gain in addition to yours the last two years? Um, yeah, I mean, growing up, you know, watching him and obviously like going to the games and the tournament, um, you kind of just learn a lot, but you also just gain a hunger for, you know, kind of wanting to be where he was at. And, uh, you know, these past two years, we've been to two Lee eights, uh, here and uh, I'm just trying to get over that hump. And, uh, also just like, you know, talking to him, he kind of compared this year's, uh, my year's Arkansas team this year to his first year at Kentucky and how they struggled and, and kind of how like they all came together during March this time period and kind of rallied and they made a national championship and lost to UConn but uh, he's kind of been giving me a little bit of tips on just leadership and keeping everybody together so I've definitely been talking to him about it. And Jordan for you I think you said it after Maui kind of joking about if Arkansas Razorback fans knew that we were playing in Africa there would be hot calls in Africa. <laughs> Bayville's six hours away. I know that's great for you guys, being as close in proximity as it is. Uh, what do you think about the impact of this fan base being just six hours away from here tomorrow? Um, it's, it's a big impact. You know, like small stuff like that can make a difference in maybe just one possession or maybe even the whole game. So, you know, to have that level of commitment and support from those people who, you know, are spending their time, their money, to be able to come and support us, you know, through whatever problems they could be facing in their own life, you know, it means a lot for us, not just us, but our team. Um, everybody recognizes it. That's why after every game, we always wave them off. We always do a hog call at the end. Like, we just want to show that we're, we're thankful for them to, you know, spend their time and come support us because they don't have to. Obviously, six hours is a drive. Like, I know I, I don't like driving six hours, but, you know, they came and they came to support. So it's always... We always want to thank them, and obviously we have the best fans ever, but we want to thank them for sure for all that they've gone through to come and support us. On the aisle. There. Jordan, uh, Jaylen, uh, Matt Tate from the Lawrence Journal World. Sorry, Jalen Wilson was just talking about, you know, growing up in the same general area. Uh, he's older, obviously, than you are, but maybe played a little pickup with him and things of that nature. Uh, what have those games been like? Do you remember playing against them pickup style? And, and also, what's it like to, to see an older guy like that that you face in the tournament now at, at such a, hot, a big stage? I mean, yeah. Um, in Dallas, you know, we always had, you know, big, big stars that were playing around there. And he just happens to be one of them. And, you know, um, obviously playing against him a couple of times, it's always been, you know, a friendly, friendly battle. Um, but it, it's always been healthy because, you know, he could – even though we're not, you know, on the same team or anything like that, or even back then, like he could still come up to me and be like, "Hey, Jordan, like you on that on that roll, you could have hit the corner. Like he was wide open. Like you gotta look for that. Just small stuff like that that you know an older guy can tell you that could really elevate your game. You know, because maybe people your age don't know that or don't know that secret. So it's it's a it's a big thing to have that support from somebody who's you know not exactly going to the same place as you are, or not where you are on the same team that you are on. So it's it's always a good thing to have. Um, I appreciate any type of support somebody wants to give me. So, so I'm proud. I'm thankful. Was, was that a real example? Uh, and that wasn't a real example, but it was simple. It was a simple example. I thought that you know. Yeah. Five minutes left in this press conference. Kamani, last year, I know a lot of people were doubting this team heading into San Francisco against Gonzaga, the number one overall seed. And Eric touched on after the game, you guys really used that as a motivation. Has he pulled clips? Has he pulled tweets? Has, has there been any motivation used in the last day or so? No, I mean, 
I think the only motivation is that we're here with a great opportunity uh, to make a Sweet 16 and um, do something that, you know, this team, we struggled a lot this season. And, you know, I think everybody was on us from media to our fans to, you know, just the general public, everybody, which, you know, it was deserved some of it. But now we're in a great opportunity to put ourselves in a great place to do something really special. And I think that's all, that's all the motivation we need as a team. So... On the right side, go ahead. A lot of questions for them about who you guys remind them of. Uh, maybe you've been asked this already, but who does Kansas remind you guys of? Maybe SEC or, or somebody you've played this year. Is there anyone? Start with Kamani. Um, if I could compare them to one SEC team, maybe Texas A&M, just the pace that they play at and how well they move the ball. Uh, so I would think A&M or maybe like Mizzou when Kobe Brown is at the five and the way that they move the ball and they and they run really well in transition. So those are probably the two teams I could com- compare them to. Jordan? Yeah, I would agree with Mizzou, but also at the same time, I feel like Kansas, you know, is their own school. Um, they have their own wrinkles. You know, they have a good coach who, who really knows the game in, in and out. So a lot of respect to them for that. Um, but, yeah, I feel like they have their own special twist to it. They have a five man who, you know, wants to make plays on the perimeter throwing bullet passes through the defense to hit a flare to Grady Dick all the way in the corner and he's in the slot. Just small stuff like that that, you know, separates them from, you know, other SEC teams because maybe, you know, SEC teams, SEC teams aren't as, you know, confident to make that pass because they haven't seen it enough because the defenders are always on them. But for them, it's, you know, it's it's the usual and it's what they do and it's, you know, what it's kind of like how their offense is, what their offense is based around. So it's, they're a different team, but they still have some similarities to some SEC schools, but they're, they're still a good team. One more from me, and if you've already been asked this, just disregard, but they're obviously trying to figure out if they're going to have their coach with them or not, and it's been that way the last week or so. Can you even begin to understand what that would be like, how how tough that is for a team to not have their head coach? Go ahead. Come on. Uh, I mean, it's probably tough, you know, not having the head of your team, but I mean – Hope he's, I hope he's there coaching them, but, you know, we kind of got to focus on, like, what's ahead of us. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I couldn't I couldn't imagine what it's like for us to play without Muss, so I could just imagine what those guys are going through in their heads. But, you know, at this, obviously I wish the best for, you know, the coach. I hope that he's, you know, healthy in everything that he's doing. Um, but at the same time, you know, we have a game. We have to go out here and compete and win, and that's that's, that's the main objective. So that's, that's what we keep in our mind on, whether, you know, they have a coach or not, which if they do, great. If they don't, great. Cool. We're going to prepare the same way and hopefully come out with the same intensity to be able to win the game. A question for both of you uh, along the lines of the extra motivation, the returning national champ, the number one seed, but also Big 12's been getting a lot of uh, notoriety as being the toughest conference in the in the country by everyone. I mean, you got to be a little bit sick of that, being in a strong SEC conference. I mean, does – is that something that, that, that you hear from other SEC schools that, hey, the, you know, take down them. That, that's the Big 12. Show, show them. Let's have some SEC pride. Kamani? Um, yeah, I mean, I've been locked into the Big 12 games. My brother Marquise Noel is playing in K-State, so I, I just know how tough he is. And, and um, I, I've been watching their games a lot and watching the Big 12, and they are a tough conference. But, I mean, the SEC, I don't, I don't know when that switch or who gave that title up, but – We've kind of been known to be like the more tougher, more physical athletic conference out of anybody. I mean, you know, coming to the Illinois game, we just heard about, you know, how they're the toughest rebounding conference. And then, you know, we we kind of rebounded well with them. So uh, the SEC, we got a lot of athletes in it, a lot of length and a lot of size. So I think the SEC is probably the toughest conference to play basketball in. The Big 12 has had a great year, though. Jordan? Um, yeah, every, there's something special about every conference. You know, Big 12 has the name of being tough, I guess. You know, I'm new to college, so I'm new to these things. But, you know, I've, I've learned that, you know, everybody has their own, you know, little signature things about them, attributes, you could say. And I feel like, to me personally, I feel like the SEC is the best in every attribute. But I've, I've been told that, you know, some places are a little more physical, a little more big, and they put, the place is a little different. But... You know, I always always watched the Big 12 growing up and the SEC. So for, for me, it's just, you know, two good conferences with good players. Time for one final question out there. 
Go ahead, sir. Kamani, a little while ago, you were kind of talking about the ups and downs of the season, different media, different fans' reactions and whatnot. If you guys are able to pull it off, back-to-back number one seats tomorrow, do you almost feel like it's a somewhat of a redemption? Like, how do you how do you view this win tomorrow based on the expectations of this season? Uh, it would just be a big win for not only us and just our program, you know, us being here. Since I've been here, we've had a lot of – big statement wins just for our program in general. And I think uh, if we get this win tomorrow, like, I, I know our fan base, like, we, I love my fan base to death, you know what I mean? Like, they're crazy, and that's what makes them them. But you got to just trust in Musk because he obviously knows what he's doing. And I think, you know, like any great fan base, whenever we're struggling, it's like the world is on fire. But, uh, I mean, that's just credit to Musk, man, like what he's done since he's been here, two back-to-back Elite Eights. And if we get this win tomorrow, it's just another statement, big win for our program. And I just can't say enough uh, as a coach he's been for us and just a leader for the program. I think uh, Arkansas is back. You know what I mean? Thank you very much, gentlemen. Best of luck tomorrow. Arkansas and Kansas tip off at 4.15 local time here. We have Coach Musselman up here shortly. Be joined by uh, Coach Musselman uh, shortly. Again, a couple reminders. As a courtesy of your media members, the coaches, the student athletes, please sign on your cell phone. Provide your name and affiliation when you want to ask a question. Raise your hand. Our microphone holders will come to you. If you have a follow-up, please alert them. If you're joining us on Zoom, please raise uh, use the raise hand function for questions. Recording of uh, this press conference on your cell phone or camera is prohibited. Without further ado. Let's welcome Coach Musselman and uh, give us a scouting preview on Kansas. Obviously, Kansas one of the one of the best uh, teams in the entire country. Uh, they do a great job sharing the basketball, moving the basketball. One of the highest assist teams, 16th in the country in assists. Uh, great basket cutters, great movement without the ball. They do a great job setting flare screens. Uh, star players in, in Grady Dick and. And obviously, you know, Wilson and then and then great point guard play. Um, you know, you can see that this is a ball club that's got clearly defined roles. Uh, their starting five is as good as any starting five in the country, if not the best starting five uh, in the entire country. Take questions at this time. Cross the aisle there. Hey, Coach, Todd Richardson, ESPN Arkansas. You always talked about when Isaiah Joe was a Razorback, how it was really play, like playing four-on-four four because he just gave so much space and the guy would have to be on him. Do you see a lot of similarities with Grady Dick and what he does for Kansas' offense? Yeah, I don't think there's any question that you've got to stay attached to him. You still have to keep your core defensive principles. Um, but certainly uh, your help off of him, especially on the strong side, you know, you, you need to be concerned with that for sure. But he does a great job with his pump fake game. He does a great job with backdoor cuts. He does an excellent job moving without the ball. And he's a really good offensive rebounder. So there's a lot of factors when you guard 
uh, Grady Dick. A lot of factors that you've got to consider. We go across the way in the back. Go ahead, sir. Hi, Coach. I'm David Lawrence with the Jayhawk Radio Network. Uh, just talk about the, your thoughts and how unique it is w when you're looking at your opponent and maybe the biggest question mark is is the other team's head coach and uh, then any thoughts you have of, of Bill Self in, in your past. Well, as all of us college coaches, uh, incredible respect for Coach Self. I mean, just a, a great respect for him. Uh, when I was looking to get into college basketball, uh, one of the places that I asked to visit and hang out with was at Kansas, and Joe Dooley helped facilitate that. I was able to watch several practices, hang out in staff meetings. Um, so great respect for, 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 for Coach. And uh, when my wife was, uh, you know, in the media uh, in Kansas City, she obviously covered uh, Coach Self when he, when he was there. So there's a there's – a, Great respect when my daughter was uh, doing March Madness stuff media-wise for, for their online stuff. She got to interview Coach Self um, many, I don't know, four years ago or whatever it was. So uh, having said all that, I, I do know their staff, uh, especially uh, Curtis Townsend. And, and uh, look, this, this staff is, is – is, they've been together for a long time. And um, – Certainly, you know, we all want Coach to be as, as healthy as possible and, and to get back to coaching as, as quick as they, you know, they, they, that he can. Um, but having said that, they're, they're a, they're a well-oiled machine in how they go about their business and how they execute. Um, so certainly concerned with those guys out on the floor, just like I'm sure that their staff's really not concerned about uh, any, of, any of us on, on the sidelines. It, it, at this point in juncture with the short turnaround, I really think a lot of it comes down to uh, player, player productivity and, and who has a big game and who can uh, try to absorb as much as possible from a game plan standpoint in a short turnaround. Obviously, the second half of these back to, you know, when you win a game in this tournament, the second game at each new site you go to becomes a little bit more difficult from a prep standpoint. Staying the far back there. Uh, hi, Eric. Uh, Adam Kilgore with the Washington Post. Um, I, I had two, two, two things. Um, first, did you, in fact, hear from, from John Daly after the game yesterday? Yes. Uh, <laughs> full four texts. What do you have to say? He's very happy with our free throw shooting. <laughs> because, um, and that's not a joke. I really do get several texts. And sometimes uh, we, do, we do converse, believe it or not, um, late night on our lack of free throw shooting. I, and I sent him, just so everybody knows, I did send him several of your guys' uh, tweets um, to him, and, and I think he felt good about that, too, that we did acknowledge him in a, in a press conference. Um, and then a, a, a little bit more serious note, I, I was hoping to get your perspective on another coach here in Des Moines, uh, Rodney Terry, um, just because you've had such a wealth of experience in coaching. Um, you know, if you could – Trying to imagine, like, being in, in the circumstance he found himself in this year, just what do you make of the job he's done? And, and I guess as a coach, how, how difficult, how odd would, would what he's been doing this year be? Well, Coach Terry was, was, was at Fresno State when I was at Nevada, so a lot of competition. He's a great coach, <laughs> and he, uh, he's a fierce competitor. Uh, you know, when you when you're on the sidelines against somebody, some you know sometimes you can really feel the opponent coach's personality. Uh, his teams always played so hard, and uh, loose balls were hard to get against Coach Terry's teams. And um, obviously they're in a you know right now they're in a, they're in a different conference than us, and so I don't you know watch them that much. Uh, but certainly the job that he's done, I think his personality and his experience um, would lend himself to be able to come into a situation like that and, and provide stability and provide leadership. And they have some great assistant coaches on that staff too. Um, and we just happen to be one of the teams that, that played Texas in an exhibition game um, to open their new building, and, and we got we got hammered pretty good. Um, 
so the talent level on that team and the the experience that they have, um, I think you've got to give their players a lot of credit as well. Um, their veteran guys have done a great job. Um, Allen and and uh, you know Carr, those two guys in particular have really done a phenomenal job leading their team. Gonna stay on the same side up front. Eric, sorry, I was in the locker room. Had to hustle. Bob, back. you're fine for being late. Uh, okay, well. I hope it's not too much. <laughs> um, I had a cu couple. Um, in this third year, you've played number one seed. I know you'd rather be playing them in, in a later round, probably. But um, what do you, what do those experiences do for you? And you know, the number one, obviously, they're, they're number ones for a reason. They win most of the time. They don't win all the time. How do you feel about the opportunity you guys have here? Because um, it's not you know the last few years, a, a number one's gotten knocked off a fair amount of time in the second round. Yeah, I mean, I th I, th I think number one. I mean, Kansas is, is – they're really good. I mean, you're talking not only number one seed but defending champions. You're talking about a team that's got some veteran players. Um, you're talking about a, a, a player of the year in their conference, a star player. Um, but we, we talked uh, this morning uh, at breakfast. We talked about our experiences playing Baylor. Uh, we talked about our experiences playing Gonzaga. Uh, some of the things that – we did really well. Some of the things that maybe we could have improved on against Baylor. Um, we talked about the mentality that you need to have going into this particular game. Um, I don't know what I mean. Not good luck to uh, to play three number ones, you know, in three years. I don't know if that's ever happened before, but um, if it has happened before, there certainly hasn't happened with many programs. I'm talking about in the history of this tournament. That would be a good project for you, Bob, um, to try to find out how, who else has been in that position. I'll, I'll put Andrew Hutchinson on. He's real good <laughs> at those things. He's a lot better than I. And then, you know, Ricky had a pretty good bounce back game yesterday. He only scored 12 points, two games in Nashville, good bounce back game. And then Mackay's played pretty well in, in Nashville and then, you know, carried it over here. What, what, first, what did, what did you think about Ricky's bounce back game? How big was that? And if he could duplicate that tomorrow? And then what do you thought of Mackay's play and how important that's been in these last few games? Yeah, Ricky's done a – you know, I mean, he's been our, our, our leading scorer. He's been a guy that we've tried to rely on as a go-to player. He's a high-volume free-throw attempt player. Uh, he can make threes. He's a great transition player. And uh, we certainly needed his baskets last night. And I thought, ab above all that stuff, Bob, I thought the one thing that Ricky did a, an awesome job at and something that we've, we've really needed from him because he's got the ability with his length, his strength, combination of speed quickness off the floor is the defensive rebound and I thought his rebounding last night was really really vital for our win the question about Makai Mitchell he's 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 been very consistent throughout the year for us providing uh, paint protection pro pro providing block shots range rebounding outside of his area um, he's a really good pick and roll offensive player in short rolls and roll being a dynamic rim roller uh, and we don't we, we have not up to this point really had to double the post uh, because he does such a good job one on one defending post uh, offensive players. So you want some more, Bob? I mean, he's played great the last three games. I think he's feeling more and more confident uh, in the system. I think he's rising to the occasion of big games. And, uh, you know, that's what you want from one of your older players on your roster. You want those guys to, as, as we get to this time frame and every game becomes a, a win or go home type situation, you want a guy like that to, to play at a high level. Stay on the same side on the aisle. I asked Kevin McCuller, who was in here earlier, who played at Texas Tech two years ago, what he remembered about Arkansas. He mentioned Hinkle Fieldhouse, playing Devo. How have you seen him evolve his game from the years at Texas Tech to being at Kansas as now one of the better defenders in the country? I mean, it's pretty wild to think that yesterday we played two guys that we had played with that were on other teams in an NCAA tournament. Now we're playing a third guy. Um, he's a great cutter, you know, and I mean that in the greatest compliment. Like he, if you turn your head and you don't have a head on a swivel, he's backdoor layup dunk. He's a great offensive rebounder. He's a, he's a tough, physical, uh, loose ball getter. Uh, he's a big part of what Kansas does. Uh, have great respect for a guy that blends in with 
some other really good offensive players, and he's really capable of having a great offensive night as well. He's an excellent defender. Um, our guys, you know, have have great respect and know that uh, he's a guy that's kind of an X factor for them. You were just talking about mentality earlier. I remember the interview with Tracy Wolfson after the Gonzaga win last year, and you talked about no one believed in us. We put that all that's of the wall. Do you see similarities from the number one overall seed Gonzaga and kind of how you prepare for that with this game tomorrow? Yeah, I don't think many people believed us in yesterday um, going into that game. So, um, yeah, I, th I think, you know, we, uh, we need to play with, with, uh, with a free mind. We need to, uh, you know, not feel pressure, which I don't, I don't think we felt pressure yesterday. Uh, I don't think we'll feel pressure um, going into the, to the Kansas game. We, we know, uh, again, we know that this is a team that is a d the defending champs and, and a number one seed. There's not, there's, you know, our, our guys are real smart. They read, they're on Twitter, they're on Instagram, they're on every, they know, they know what we're, what we're playing against. And, and like I said, we have in incredible respect for them. We're going to go up front on the same side. Familiar face. A couple more, Eric. Norm, Norm Roberts, I think I got this right. I think he said Arkansas has got more athletes than anybody else in the country. What, what do you think about that? It's a great compliment. I'm sure. Our, um, I mean, I, we do have, we have, we do have uh, some great athletes, obviously, um, at, at different positions. And, and uh, you know, that's kind of the st the style of play that we have is you know dictates your person your per personnel, and uh, you know I think the way we play is is to try to accentuate our our athleticism. And then Nick, you know, he's one of ten in the second half against A and M, two of ten yesterday. Even I know that that's three of twenty. Very uncharacteristic. In a weird way, is it almost like good because man, he can't keep shooting like that. He's going to bust out against Kansas. Or what, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think that everybody's you know puts a, puts one of their best defenders on Nick. Um, he he draws attention when he when he's playing off the bounce in pick and roll. Uh, but it, but it, that also opens up things for other guys on the team. So um, you know his 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 ability to get in the paint. And find people it becomes important for us as well as as teams uh, focus and, and maybe shade an extra defender at him. I think I got this right. Um, I think you're three and zero in second round games at Nevada when you went Sweet Sixteen. Obviously, the last two years you obviously had to win the second round to get the Elite Eight. We've talked about how you do so well when you have you know multiple days to get ready, but you obviously done pretty well two days to get ready too. What, what do you think is the key to that? What do you think about being three and zero in second round games? The key is having good players. <laughs> that's the key is having good players that that can uh, that are I, I think maybe they're used to uh information being given to them and and um giving us feedback that hey coach we've had enough or hey coach we can handle a little bit more I think that player feedback becomes important um but we're trying to squeeze in as many uh mini uh film sessions we have a we have a a full court and a half court in our meeting room taped down um, so that we can, uh, every time we eat, we try to squeeze a little five-minute segment in um, to do a little bit of a walkthrough in, in the ballroom I think becomes extremely important. Obviously today we, we won't do much on, on the floor uh, just because of a, a game that starts uh, late afternoon, so there's there's no reason to go out there today and and to go up and down. So it'll be a lot of mental stuff on the floor today. Time for a, one more question. You got to we'll get, get the microphone over there. Then we're going to the back, then we'll come back to you to close it. David Lawrence for the Jayhawks. Uh, again, looking at your, your schedule, Coach, you ran off like eight straight wins, and you've gone through some, um, you know, th three or four Struggles. weeks. Struggles where you struggled a little bit. Uh, obviously, the schedule dictates part of that, but what what are some of the tangible things that, that go well for you guys when you succeed, and and uh, what goes wrong when, when you guys are, are not hitting on all cylinders? Well, I, th I think if you, you, know, you look at some of the games that, that we've lost, they've, they've been true road games. Um, early in the uh, SEC schedule, we struggled because I think it's, it was just kind of new. We had played home games, 
and then we had played neutral site games in Maui. Uh, one of the best players in college basketball, Trevin Brazil, goes down with a knee injury. Nick Smith's with us for a little bit, or he's not with us to start. Then he's with us for a little bit. Then he's out. Then he comes back. I think any team uh, with college-age student-athletes, there's a lot of stuff going on, and you're trying to balance it. I thought yesterday was as good as game as we played all year, and I, and I said before we started our Illinois prep that I thought we were still a ball club that's getting better, and I truly believe that. We have 12 scholarship players suiting up tomorrow. Six of them are freshmen, half of our team tomorrow that's going to suit up our freshmen. That's a young team. That's a young roster, um, and only two guys that are returning players, so uh, Sometimes, you know, if you go to back-to-back -back elite eights, you're going you're gonna to go through a, a process where maybe you don't have a lot of returning guys because um, we do have some guys like Jalen Williams that went to the NBA after their sophomore year. And so um, I think that maybe is, is, is why we've struggled at times. Um, but we've been in every game for the most part. It's, there's been a lot of one-possession games, whether it's at Baylor – a lot of one possession games. So the the fight, the grit, uh, the giving yourself a chance to win at the end of the game, that's been there for most of the season. Um, so it is a competitive group. Final question up front here. I appreciate you taking care of me. Um, Eric, a Anthony Black, I know you talked a lot about him, but just wondering, um, what did you think of his play yesterday in his first NCAA tournament game? Then what do you expect from him tomorrow? And just how important is he to tomorrow? Yeah, I thought Anthony was great. I mean, he's 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 been uh, he's been pretty banged up for about the last month. I think the the the, the biggest thing I've been impressed with is is his availability. Um, I mean, he practices every day. Um, you know, he went through a couple weeks ago with, with an ankle sprain that was really bothering him. Um, he obviously absorbs a ton of contact, and he just keeps picking himself up off the floor and going and competing. Uh, but his length, his ability to see over the defense, his ability to defensive rebound, and we've kind of, you know, some of our defensive matchups have, have, have changed of late, meaning, meaning the last couple games where we've been able to do some things defensively, matching up maybe different than we did earlier in the year. Um, he's guarded some bigger players of late um, rather than just the point guard. And I think, you know, through the first 20, 21 games, he was primarily guarding uh, only the point guards. We've, we've kind of been able to, to put him on multiple people during the course of a game, which is a little bit different than the way we used him uh, earlier in the year. Thank you very much, Coach. Best of luck Thanks. tomorrow.
Again, just a couple of reminders. The Texas locker room is going to be open for a 40-minute period while we're uh, having press conferences with student athletes as well as the head interim coach here. Schedule to start at 3:10, and have uh, Coach Rodney Terry here at 3:30. If you're joining us on Zoom, please use the raise hand function for questions. Recording press conference on uh, cell phones or camera is prohibited. Please provide your name, media affiliation each time you ask a question. If you have a follow-up, please uh, let the microphone holder know. And as a courtesy to the uh, your fellow media members, coaches, student athletes, please make sure you silence your cell phones. Satellite correspondence, Galaxy 17. Transponder 16A, download frequency 12006.5V.
Pleased to be joined by uh, student athletes uh, Timmy Allen to my immediate right, Marcus Carr, the man in the middle, and Brock Cunningham. This time, if you have questions, please raise your hands. Front row here in the on the aisle. Hey, uh, Thomas Jones, Austin, American Statesman. Uh, gentlemen, uh, did did you guys watch any of the Penn State game? And I think they made 13 threes like y'all did. And anyone can answer, what stood out watching them play and beat a &M? Start with Timmy first. Um, yeah, like you said, they're a really good team. Um, they beat a good A&M team last night. They get a lot of shots. They got a lot of guys that can score a lot of different ways. Um, obviously, that was a, uh, was a focus for us against Colgate, so not much changes there. Um, they got a couple of unique players who are really good around the basket and um, getting other people's shots. Um, so it's no it's no different than any other team. Um, prepare the right way. Um, watch a lot of film. Um, honing on the details of what they're trying to do and just locking on that. But um, coming off the Colgate game, um, definitely got a sense of urgency running people off the three point line. Uh, that'll be a big key in this game. Marcus. Yeah, piggybacking off what Ta said, we definitely uh, watched that game and. You know, they're a good team. They shoot the ball well. They have a lot of guys who can, you know, knock down shots and uh, some guys who can, you know, create shots for others as well. So we're just locked in on our game plan and looking to execute. Brock? Uh, they cover it pretty well. Okay. Other questions? On the right side by the aisle. Uh, ben Jones, com. You guys force turnovers better than any team that Penn State's played, but Penn State – takes care of the ball probably better than any team that you guys have played. What's the art of forcing a turnover? Start with Marcus. Uh, just trying to, you know, speed guys up. Um, it's different every game depending on, you know, who the team is and what what people were trying to attack on defense and stuff like that. But genuinely, we just want to be the most aggressive team and try to speed teams up. But like you said, they do a pretty good job of taking care of the ball. So um, it's going to be a battle of two good teams. Brock? Marcus is doing a great job today. He covered it again. Timmy, anything to add? Likewise. Okay, we're going to go to the aisle in the back here, and then we're coming to you up front. Timmy, I know you guys feel like you can, you're can. you going to win this game. Why do you like your chances going into tomorrow? Um, I mean, with this team, I'm, I like our chances in the game. I'm, I'm not – this is a great team we're playing. Um, we have to prepare just like any other team. Um, I just think if we hang our head on our preparation like we always do, we're confident in that. Um, we still got to go out and play the game. Um, we respect our opponent 100 times through. Um, we know they're a really good team, but um, we're just going to hone in on our, on our preparation, focus on what, what we do, what we can control, um, and just go from there and play off that. I'm going to move up front on the same side on the aisle. Uh, Timmy, uh, are you going to guard Pickett? And what do you think of Pickett? And in a case like this, would that be something you approach RT and say, hey, I'd like to mark him? Um, I think he's a great player. Um, we've broken down some of his film. He's a guy who can get a lot of buckets himself. Rebound the ball, pass the ball. That's something I admire. I feel like I'm kind of that way too. Um so I like I like it. I like the matchup. Um, I'm going to be matched on them sometimes. Sometimes all the other guys will be on them. But that's definitely something I'm, I'm excited for, something um, I focus on going into games. Um, he's a great player, and I'm just trying to make him uncomfortable as much as I can, along with the other guys who are going to be matched on him. Um, just try to take him off his spots a little bit, make him uncomfortable as possible, play on the scouting report. Um, but, yeah, I love matchups like that. Um, nothing different than anything I've gone up against all year, so I'm excited. We're going to take a question from Zoom. Go ahead in the back there. We have a question from Jeff Jones. Jeff, when you're ready. Hey, guys. Jeff Jones from KBU here in Austin. Um, the NCAA released a video, I think, yesterday on RT's journey, and Dylan DeSue had a soundbite in there that basically told us he takes pride in knowing that RT's future at UT is connected to this run. Do you guys take pride in the fact that you're not not necessarily playing for RT's job, but the farther you go, the more likely it is he'll stay here in Austin? Let's start with Brock. Um, you know, 
That's a great question, but with any with any time with any game in March Madness, you're focused on the next game. Worrying about the repercussions of how we play down the line won't help us win those games. So, truthfully, we're focused about the next game. We're giving 100 percent of our attention to Penn State right now. Marcus, yeah, like Brock said, you know, our, our attention is always on you know the next game and and what we have to do. Never really trying to get too far ahead of ourselves. We kind of like to say live where our feet are so we're just focused on preparing for Penn State as best as we can and as far as playing for you know RT we are we're always playing for each other this whole team this whole organization is a family so we're always playing for each other. Jimmy? Um, like Marcus said um, we're just playing for the guy next to each other um, that also includes RT but not a main focus but we're just playing for each other. We have a question on the right side here. Craig Way, Longhorn Radio Network. Um, I, I, you guys knowing RT as well as you know him, I'd like for each of you to say what you think is the strangest or goofiest phrase that he has. Live where your feet are, meat and potatoes, whatever. What's what's the the uh, the most interesting one or the one that was the most challenging to figure out? Marcus? I gotta think. Here you go. I'll do an easy one. I'm gonna go with combo plate. Uh, you said meat and potatoes. That's you know that heavy heavy day going at it. Combo plate is you know combo the meat and potatoes and the laser focus. You know putting it all into one. Um, that's one of my favorites for sure. Brock. Uh, hay in the the haze in the barn is one that he likes a lot. Just about being prepared and the work is already done. Now you just got to go take care of business. Jimmy. I don't know a favorite phrase. I, I, I he's got a ton of them. He's just got a lot of like comic relief moments, and it's 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 good for us. I like that. Other questions for our student athletes? Have you guys? I, I know you guys have been here for two years, Brock. You've been here seems like for, forever. <laughs> have you guys thought about you talk about the next game? But if you win that next game, you do something that hadn't been done by you guys in fifteen years. Is that something you think about, or? Uh, not not so much because like we were talking earlier, you get you get focused on too far ahead and you end up losing the moment. So we're just working on winning this game and all the preparation that goes into it because the rest of the day and all of tomorrow is the most important 48 hours of the season right now. Still have five minutes left in this uh, session here. Questions on the aisle? Go ahead. Montre David, Daily Texan. Y'all have talked about um, RT's kind of focus and his calmness. How does that affect the way you guys prepare and how has it helped you guys kind of in the stretch and how does that calm attitude stay true even when, you know, this is the most important moments of the season, as you said? Start with Timmy first. Um, I think specifically it helps with communication from him to us, us to him in huddles. Um, it, there's, a, there's a sense of calmness with RT. Um, he doesn't want a lot going on. Um, obviously, there's a lot of player dialogue, but we all, always circle back to what him and our staff is saying. Um, I just think his level of calmness and communication and trust in us gives us a sense of confidence. Um, and it lets us just go out and play free. I think that's what you want as a player. Um, so I think that's something that he really instills in us. Marcus? Timmy pretty much hit it on the head, but, yeah, you know, when – you know the the leader at the at the head is someone who's calm and poised. It makes it that much easier for you know me as a point guard to continue to be calm and poised, and you know it just flows throughout the whole entire team. So uh, he does a great job of that, whether we're in timeouts or just small little moments or whenever it is. But he does a pretty good job of just keeping us calm and collected. Brock, piggyback on those guys, they killed it. I'm gonna go to the front row here, right here, sir, and then we're. Get to the back and come back to the aisle. David Jones from Penn Live. Uh, Marcus, what are the differences you've found between Big Ten basketball and Big 12 basketball style-wise? Style uh, yeah, definitely, you know, uh, two different leagues. I would say when I was playing in the Big Ten, it was um, different pace for sure, different pace of league, um, a lot bigger guys in terms of just post presence, bigger guys. Um, still very competitive league. I remember playing in there. It was night in, night out. You're still playing a lot of good teams. 
Uh, I know it's a bit different now, coaching changes, a lot of different teams, stuff like that, but um, I definitely enjoy playing in the Big Ten. It was tough. It was a grind. And, you know, the Big 12 is the toughest league in the country, I feel like, this year. So it's been tough to go through that as well, but also fun at the same time just as a competitor going through them. But, you know, two great leagues. I'm definitely grateful to have played in both of them. We're going to go on the right side, gentlemen, and then we'll come up to the aisle. Marcus, you made a uh, comment last night in the post-game news conference when somebody asked you about your shot keying the 11-0 run, and you said, well, it was my turnover that started it, and you made a point about you went to the bench briefly and came back in. What goes through your mind if you have a turnover like that and you do go to the bench about clearing the mind and going back to work? Yeah, just really just collecting myself. You know, I know – especially as the point guard, the guy who's kind of supposed to set the tone out there. You know, I never want to be the one to be, you know, making the mistakes or turning the ball over. But, you know, really these guys, they had my back the whole time. Nobody was ever, you know, they'll tell me like, hey, you know, obviously take care of the ball. But never, they never lose confidence in me. That when I, Once I got right back in the game, they're like, you're good. You know, I knocked down a shot and it was like, all right, everybody, you know, settle back down. But um, really just give all the confidence to my teammate, uh, all the credit to my teammates and, and the staff just still having confidence in me. I went through that little woe, that little spell right there, but um, they still have confidence in me to come back in the game and make plays. Going to go on the aisle on our left side here. Go I'm ahead, I'm going to ask uh, Timmy a question and then a follow-up with Marcus. Uh, Timmy, the last like seven or eight games, your, your, your scoring has dropped a bit, but your assists have gone up, and guys like Dylan and Tyrese have kind of gotten going more. How have you changed your game offensively the last month and a half? And Marcus, what have you seen from the way Timmy's maybe changed things up on offensive end, doling out a little bit more? Um, I think I'm just kind of taking the game as it comes. Um, I'm not really forcing anything. Going back to before the three games I missed, um, uh, I, my scoring has been down, but I'm still making plays. Um, and I'm just trying to play to win. like. I've scored over 2,000 points. I don't got nothing to prove. Um, I like to hang my head on that, but at the same time, I'm just taking the game as it comes. And missing three games, watching the team work out how they worked out, like and coming back, I'm not trying to come in and be a pig. I'm not thirsty to score. Um, I want to come in and read the game at a high level and play the game with a high IQ and make the game easier on my teammates. Seeing Dylan and other guys thrive is not something that makes me envious or hungrier to score. Um, I kind of just take that and play off them. Like I know it's going to come back to me tenfold. I'm, that's something I'm never worried about. You know, so um, just play the game naturally. I'm never someone who's going to try and be somebody outside of myself. Um, so I'm just taking the game as it comes, reading with a high IQ. Like you said, you know, him coming back, we never really had a question of, you know, how he was going to be playing. And I would say that's all year, you know, whether he's scoring or assisting the ball, he's been doing that both at a high level. And, you know, he's an aggressive player and teams have to respect him. And I feel like that's why he's able to, you know, get the assist that he's been able to have. We need him to be aggressive on offense and aggressive doesn't always mean, you know, shooting the ball. So he's out there making plays for us on both ends of the floor. And, you know, that's all that really matters to us. And we also know that he's able to step up in big moments and, and give us baskets as well. So cool we have time it. for one final question. You're going to go on the aisle again. If you can give your name and affiliation, thank you. John High Fox 7, Austin for, for Marcus and Timmy, this fan base has, has embraced you guys since you got here. What would it mean to you two to take, be a part of the group that takes this team to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 08? Um, it'd be a surreal moment. It'd be exactly what we envisioned since the day we got here. Um, we came here with a plan. Um, and, since, and since I've been here in this community and just been embraced and loved, man, like that's, that's all I'm really here for. I want to win. I want to win for the community. I want to feel the love. Um, I mean, just going back to Austin, like, after a win on, on the road and feeling that, I can only imagine what it would be like to go back headed to the six, Sweet 16. Um, I'm sure that would be a great feeling. But um, And just the winning tradition of Texas, we want to bring that back. Um, it's something we've always had the goal of doing, um, seeing, seeing different teams around campus go take pictures, winning championships in front of the tower, and we finally got to do that. I'm saying I could. I'm glad I could say I could do that once, but I want to do it again. Um, I was always waiting for that day, so I'm glad that happened. But um, I couldn't imagine what it'd be like going back to Austin, head to the Sweet 16. So it's definitely something we're we're tracking for. Yeah, like Timmy said, um, 
It definitely is. It's like you said, it's surreal. Uh, just feeling the love from the community, being embraced by them, and you know, just wants you to makes you want to play that much harder for them and you know succeed. We want to do it as a team for us, but you know, knowing the community that we have, the school that we have, and like you said, the tradition of winning that is going on at our school. You know, we want to definitely be a part of that elite club at our school that gets to say, you know, we're winners. So uh, we just want to bring that back to to Austin. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We'll have Coach uh, Perry up here shortly. Coach Rodney Terry. Yep. Pleased to be joined by interim head coach Rodney Terry from Texas. Coach, your thoughts about tomorrow's opponent? Okay. Um, tomorrow's opponent, very well coached team. Uh, Mike has done a great job uh, with the program there at Penn State. Um, man, you talk about uh, one of the best passing teams I've seen all year uh, on tape, getting a chance to watch them in person, uh, elite level uh, passing team, elite level shooters, uh, with a, uh, uh, a really challenging, unique, uh, player in Pickett who, uh, kind of does it all. He's a guy that can score the basketball, pass the basketball, and, uh, man, elite level shooters around him in Funk and Lundy. Uh, so really good team, big challenge for us, one of the better three point shooting teams in the country. Um, it's going to be a great matchup. This time we'll take questions for Coach Terry. Please raise your hand on the aisle here. Montre Deve, Daily Texan. Uh, Coach Sherry, you've talked in the past about how you try to bring a calm attitude to the game. Can you talk a little bit about um, some of the personal influences that kind of help to keep you grounded, um, especially during stressful times like this? You've talked in the past about your faith and um, the impact of your family. What are some of those things that keep you calm in March? No, oh, absolutely. I think sometimes... You know, just the experiences that you've had. And, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, people that you work with, you know, I worked with Rick Barnes for nine years, and, you know, we were in postseason play every year, and we made deep runs in March. And, you know, Rick's one of those guys that really keeps the guys loose, and uh, he's he's really loose himself a lot. He's one of the most uh, one wittiest guys that you would know in terms of always joking and uh, uh, just kept everybody, the staff, the players, everybody loose and uh I worked with another guy, Jerry Wainwright. We had great runs in postseason play as well, and I thought Coach was the same way as well. I think you just have to kind of be who you are. Um, I think uh, so many times, and I tell our guys all the time, if you you uh, if you spend a lot of time into worrying about this and worrying about that, you don't need to worry. You know, if you're a guy that stay prayed up and you have faith, there's no, no, no need to worry. You know, you put it in God's hands, and everything takes care of itself. You know, you control what you can control, and worry just takes away a lot of anxiety. Uh, gives you a lot of anxiety in terms of, you know, what I have to do. You don't need that. Just, again, nothing nothing positive comes from worrying. So um, just try to live your day every day and be positive, and you'll have positive results. I'm going to stay on the aisle there. Go ahead. Coach John High, Fox 7, Austin. You, you had a lot of great things to say about Penn State. How would you describe your team, and what do you like about your squad going into tomorrow? You know what I think? Uh, I think our team's obviously playing our best basketball of the year. 
Um, I think uh, our defense has traveled with us. We talked about that all year long in terms of, you know, uh, we play really good defense at home, and we've carried that over in the plan on the road and uh, really locking into the details. They've been very focused uh, in regards to what we're trying to do offensive-wise, defensive game plan-wise. Um, they played really hard and unselfish, and as a team, they've been really connected. I've been really proud of this group. I think, uh, you know, they don't get a lot of a lot of notoriety in terms of what they've done this season, you know, uh, and they've clearly done it themselves. They stayed the course and uh, and really worked this season all 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 year long. Um, you know, they they're sitting right now with the fourth most wins in school history right now uh, over the course of of. Uh, uh, this season, and sometimes we don't we don't look at that. We try to live in the present, and we are very uh, present oriented, and where you live, where your feet are. But they've done some great things to this point right now, and I think they're still a hungry team and still want more. Other questions? Okay, going to go on the right side, Coach. Craig White, Longhorn Radio Network. RT, when um, in, in your past and your experience as an assistant and as a head coach, do you notice? A difference in demeanor and and focus and attitude with your basketball teams after the first tournament game is done and going into the second tournament game is there more of a calmness uh, and and how does the coaching staff go about the the reinforcement of that in getting them mentally and emotionally ready for the round two game? That's a great question, Craig. I think uh, I think as you well know, it doesn't matter what seed you have going into that first game. It really doesn't matter. Everybody in the tournament uh, is a really good team. They've all had a great season, and uh, they're not going to be intimidated by anyone on a neutral court. Uh, And so, uh, you know, with that being said, I think, uh, you know, you have to place a really, really high emphasis on on being prepared and not giving 20 minutes away. We've tried to do that all year long and understanding that you've got to play the game for 40 minutes, and every 20 minutes is very valuable. And uh, I think we've had that approach um, through our conference play. We've carried that into postseason play, and uh, I thought we displayed that pretty well the other night. I think once you get past the first game, you're in the tournament. I mean, you know, you're really in the tournament. <laughs> There's not anybody that you're going to play in that second round, again, that hasn't had to work really hard and have that kind of emphasis uh, and, and, and continue to be able to finish in, in advance. You know, those teams, you know, going to the next round, they're really – really good and they're confident and uh, and I think uh, our group right now going into the second round we know we've got a we've got a great challenge ahead but uh, but but we also have have played in this building and uh, uh, I think uh, there'll be a level of comfort you know coming in and and competing against one of the best teams in the country. Coach we're going to take a question on zoom in the back. Mallory? We have a question from Jeff Jones. Jeff when you're ready. Hey, Coach, this is Jeff Jones from KVU here in Austin. Um, a moment ago, Timmy spoke about the communication in huddles, and he said that your sense of calm and, and your encouraging player dialogue gives them a lot of confidence. Do you have, like, a, a huddle philosophy? Was there a strategy to, to building the player dialogue and, and the way that you organize huddles? Well, I think we've continued to do what we've, what we've done all year in terms of the way we organize a huddle. We have guards on one side and we have our bigs on the other side, so we're able to communicate uh, what we have to in terms of strategy-wise, um, offensively and defensively, and then the guys that are subbing in behind those guys or behind those positions. But I think when you go in a hole, I think, first of all, you have to try to you know, take a deep breath and kind of just regroup a little bit, whether you're playing well or not playing well whether you need to make some adjustments or not make adjustments. I think when you go in a huddle, it's a lot like a pit stop. You've got to be able to go in there. You've got to be able to give the information. The guys have to be able to go in and take the information, and then they've got to obviously take it back to the court. So I think there has to be a level of calmness. I think you have to wait a little bit before you go into the huddle because, you know, sometimes the huddles can be very emotional um, in a positive way. Sometimes they can be kind of in a negative way at times to where guys have to come in and just kind of calm down take a deep breath, and let's regroup. And we've had to do that uh, throughout the course of this season. And uh, when we have, we've just said to our guys, everybody just take a deep breath. Let's look around here. Let's stay calm right now. We're poised. We've been here before. And uh, let's regroup and let's talk about what we really have to do. And I think we've been able to do that at a very high level 
uh, throughout the course of conference play and postseason play. We're going to go on the left side, coach in the back row. Uh, Rodney, Mike Finger, San Antonio Express News. Last, last night sitting up there, Marcus went out of his way to say, I needed to come out of the game for a while. That, that changed the game. I'm wondering how rare that is for a guy in his situation. And also, does he seem to put a lot of this on himself and, and maybe a little too much? And how kind of have you seen his mindset during this time? No, great, great question, Mike. Uh, Marcus Carboy, I tell you what, he's had an incredible season. Uh, he's, been an, he's been an incredible teammate. And uh, I, th- I think throughout the course of this season, you know, it's, he, uh, even when he's not playing well or, or scoring the ball particularly well, uh, he's been a guy that's made other guys around him better. He's trusted his teammates all year long. Uh, he's so bought into winning and wanting to win at the highest level. Um, you know, last night, you know, he had a couple of uncharacteristic uh, turnovers late in the game. And uh, some of that could have been a little f- fatigue, staying out there a little bit longer. Uh, but, but uh, again, he's quickly to, to uh, um, really kind of just reset, hit the reset button again a little bit. I went over to him at that, at that particular time as he was on the bench and just said, hey, just relax, man. We know you're going to play your best at, 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 the, at the biggest moment. You know, you'll get those back, no problem. You play great all, all, all night long, you'll be in there to finish this game. Finish this game like you have all year. And uh, – you know, again, nobody wants to win as much as Marcus Carr does. We're going to stay in the back, in the back row here on the aisle. Question about Tyrese. Um, he won the crowd yesterday. Um, this is awfully close to Iowa State, um, and the crowd was, you know, not super friendly towards Tyrese. What has his attitude been towards coming back to Iowa, and how's he kind of focused in on playing um, in an environment that might be a little tougher than he's used to? Tyrese has been great all year long, whether we're at home on the road. You know, college athletics as a whole, the landscape of it, not just Ames, Iowa, but I think everybody's just going to have to get used to understanding kids going to go where they want to go, and uh, you shouldn't punish those kids and you shouldn't treat those kids that way. That's not fair. That's not fair to them. And, uh, um, you know, I, I just don't think that's right. The landscape's changed. you got to adapt and adjust. Uh, uh, Tyrese was incredible when we went to Ames, Iowa. He never once ever – Okay, paid any attention to all the awful things that were said to him during that game. He just played the game. He didn't get caught up in the nonsense. I was so proud of him. I said it to our guys uh, the night we got back at 2 in the morning, how he carried himself like a true professional and, 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 and a respectful young man. All the things that were said, never once did he retaliate. College athletics as a whole needs to understand guys are going to come and go. Okay, and you can't hold those guys or, or try to say things to those guys. That's not right. That's not fair. If we had it happen in our building, I'll stop and say, hey, you can't do that. Adapt and adjust. Guys are going to come and go all the time. Leave it alone. That's not fair. Another question in the back on the same side. Yeah. Uh, hi, Rodney. Uh, Adam Kilgore with the Washington Post. Um, you, you were telling a uh, uh, nice story the other day about how when your, your father would – tell you every time a job opened, I was, you know, a power five job, like, hey, if that's your job, go get it. Um, did, did you see yourself that way before this season? You know, had, had you all resigned yourself to like, you know, maybe that won't be part of my, 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 my journey? Or, or you know, how, how did you view yourself in, 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 in regard to that? Well, I think throughout the course of my career, I think I've always really tried to live where my feet are in terms of you, you got to treat every job like it's your last job. You know, you can't be looking at this job or that job you got to do the job where you are to the fullest. And if you're blessed to, to, to be wanted a, another opportunity, like I, I thought I would at some point, being at the mid-major level, um, you know, I had to do where I was at an unbelievable level. And, and I thought, you know, at doing that, 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 that you would, you know, probably have an opportunity at some point uh, to be a Power 5 coach. Uh, my dad all the time, you know, instilled in me to, to, to dream big and, and want to be one of those guys. If that's your, your goals and aspirations to be able to do, don't let anyone take that away from you. Um, and, and I, I, you know, I said the other day that he always dreamed bigger than I did in terms of, you know, seeing myself on that stage. And uh, um, I think through hard work and I think through, you know, just, you know, you know attention to details in terms of your craft, I think, uh, and, and through, again, with, with having faith. You know, a lot of times we think that we should be over here or put you where you're supposed to be. We think we should be over here coaching here, doing this, you know. And uh, I thought of guys have stayed the course and worked 
work the season all year long. And, uh, you know, as a result of that, you want to, you want to ride this thing as far as you can ride it, you know, and we know we're only guaranteed 40 more minutes against, you know, a, an elite level team that's playing really, really well right now. One of the hottest teams in the tournament right now. Uh, but, uh, um, it's been a lot of fun. We tried to enjoy it along the way. Uh, but, uh, um, you know, I, I just try to encourage the guys to want more and uh, to uh, to really go out and live where your feet are and stay in the present. And uh, let's take this thing as far as we can. Other questions out there? We're going to go right behind this gentleman on the aisle. You touched on Pickett a little bit. Um, are there any comparisons to guys you've seen throughout the season for him? And what are some of the sp uh, specific ways that you can try and focus in on limiting his influence on the game? He's a big-time player. I think he's an NBA player. Um, he reminds me a lot of – I start going way back a little bit. He reminds me – I watched him yesterday live. I was like, man, that's Tony Allen. You know, um, Tony Allen was, – I was in the league with Tony Allen at Oklahoma State uh, when he came in the league. And, man, he changed Oklahoma State and made him a Final Four team. Uh, but, but Pickett, boy, he's one of those tough matchups that can score the ball. He can pass the ball. He makes other guys around him better. Um, in our league, you know, the closest guy I could probably liken him to is Keontae, Keontae Johnson from Kansas State. It was an extremely hard matchup for us this year uh, because he could really score the ball. Um, he could kind of play bully ball a little bit, kind of like Pickett does. Pickett plays some bully ball a little bit as well in terms of really just backing undersized guys down and uh, size guys down and really trying to put, it, put himself in scoring position on a great passing position for a teammate. Uh, but that's probably the closest comparison we had this year to deal with was Keontae Johnson. We switch to the right side, Coach. Arthur, you mentioned about the guys uh, getting uh, in the arena and having played a game in the arena. I know part of your routine is when you get them, you show them where the scoreboards are and where the benches are and things like that. How much does it help now having played a game in there and you just got through with an hour and a half practice in there in terms of the comfort level of the rims. I know it's different when as a, a dome as opposed to a true basketball arena, but how much of a comfort is that? Sure. No, I, th I think, again, uh, we've had a chance to be in this building already. We played, and you alluded to the fact that we got a chance to practice here again today. Um, you know, now it's just about really just grooving your shot and, you know, continue to work your craft. I mean, we, we're not going to come back over here tomorrow for a shoot-around. We're going to be at, a, at an alternative site, and it's just a matter of just seeing the ball go through the basket and continue to do what you've done in terms of your reps. You know, but again, I always get back to it. it's not not so much about about uh, you don't know how well you're going to shoot the basketball night in and night out, but you know you can bring your defense every night. So we like to hang our hat on our identity in terms of knowing we're going to guard hard every night, hoping that we come over here and make us, you know, make more shots than we miss. But uh, I think we'll be more than familiar with this building uh, come tomorrow night. Any final? Okay, we're going to go back row. Rodney, I think uh, it, it was Christian Bishop last night who sort of like, you know, uh, spoke in front of the team and congratulated you for it was your first NCAA, NCAA tournament win. Um, one, what did that uh, moment mean to you? And two, I know it's, you know, you're scouting and it's a, in the tournament's a bubble, but it, have, have you taken a half second over the, between last night and this morning to uh, reflect on, you know, that, that milestone in your career? You know what? I've, I've really just, you know, I'm so proud of our guys. I, uh, they, they, I mean, they're they're the ones out there playing. We try to put them in the in the right positions and and uh, uh, situations to where they can you know be successful on both ends of the floor. But I was just really proud of those guys. You know, uh, you know, last year we uh, we played in the first round and we were able to win. And uh, you know, we put this team back together uh, this year, and seven of those guys are returning. And uh, I'm just really happy for them, and I want more for them. Uh, I thought they had a great experience last year, and you know, the thing I've said to those guys, um, you know, each round you get a chance to advance, it just gets better and better. So, you know, last night was just, again, just no no different than any other night. Playing in the Big 12 every night, you have to play a really good opponent, and uh, you keep it for one night. You enjoy it for one night, and it's on to the next opponent and uh, trying to figure out what we need to do to try to try to win the next ball game. Time for one final question. Anybody out there with one last question for the coach? Okay, Coach, thank you very much. Best of luck tomorrow. All right, thank you.
is 40 minutes. Let me see when some of these, like the last conference we had, uh, Arkansas went straight to practice. Let me see. Oh, well, yeah, w w when the players are done here, you can go back to the locker room because the coach will be up here for 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Got to get back in the game. couple household uh, chores before we start our final press conference of the day with Penn State. As a courtesy of your fellow media members, as well as the coaches and student athletes, please silence your phones. Please provide your name, affiliation, raise your hand if you have a question for our student athletes. Our microphone holder will come over. If you have a follow-up, please alert the microphone holder. If you are joining us on Zoom, please uh, use the raise hand function for questions. 
and recording of this press conference on cell phones or cameras is prohibited. Satellite coordinates, the Galaxy 17 transponder 16, a downlink frequency 12006.5V. Transcripts will be provided uh, by ASAP following the conclusion of this press conference and posted in the media room as well as online. Please be joined by Penn State, to my immediate right, Swingman Miles Dredd, Guard Andrew Funk, Seth Lundy, and Guard Jalen Pickett. At this time, we'll take questions. Please raise your hand. We'll come right to you. In the back, standing up there. Mark Brennan from Lions 247. Uh, this is for Andrew and Miles. I wonder if you could talk about how Coach Shrewsbury has kind of developed as this season went along. It's only his second season as a head coach. What have you seen from him in terms of development? Thanks. Start with Andrew first. Uh, yeah, he's been incredible. Um, we don't get to this point without him. Uh, and to be honest, like you say development, but like he's been lights out from, from day one. And even when he was recruiting me, I, I kind of saw and was amazed at how good of a coach he was, just X's and O's, and even just how, how well he's been able to develop relationships. Um, so, yeah, he's, like I said, we're not in the place that we are without him. Very grateful to have him leading us, leading our program, and, uh, you know, big, obviously, the huge part of our success. Miles? Um, yeah, I, I would completely agree with Andrew. Um, I'd also say that, you know, he's just, you know, in-game, you know, coaching, learning, how, learning our team, learning, you know, who to talk to certain ways and who to, you know, how to help guys individually is definitely is um, one of his biggest strengths right now, and it's paid dividends throughout the rest of the season. On the left side, fellas, go ahead. Uh, Tyler Millen, Daily Collegian. Miles, Seth, you guys got your season cut short in 2020, and this was the first time you played an NCAA tournament game. What did it mean to you guys to wear the Penn State uniform in an NCAA tournament game for the first time? Start with Miles first. Uh, it felt amazing. Um, I felt the love and support from back home. Um, you know, I did it for those guys that, you know, were on that team back then, you know, after the Big Ten tournament. And we got our name called. I text all those guys on that team, just telling them how much I appreciated them and how I was going to give it everything I got for those guys. Uh, yes, it definitely it definitely feels amazing to uh, be here in this position wearing a Penn State uniform. And, um, you know, it's, it's like a dream come true, you know, uh, making the NCAA tournament. But, you know, wearing that blue and white, it just feels a little bit more special. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited for our fans as well. Our fans have been waiting for this moment for a very long time. And, uh, you know, to get to this point, it's like a big relief. But, um, yeah, like we still got more games to play and stuff like that. So, you know, we're going to try to do our best uh, tomorrow night. On the left side, guys. Go ahead, sir. Andrew, uh, Dave Campbell, Associated Press. Um, how have you just been able to, at least statistically, improve your three-point shooting this season? And, you know, you talked a little bit about how having a guy like Jalen to help set you up has been a big help. But what sort of have you appreciated about being in this offense with these guys? Um, yeah, I think um – you know, I kind of slid into a different role than I played my previous four years. Uh, definitely much more, you know, specialized here. Obviously, I can, you know, I can put the ball on the floor a little bit, but, you know, predominantly catch and shoot and coming off screens and whatnot. So I think that kind of focus in on that specific area has really helped me and, uh, you know, was a really, you know, large focus in my off season and, and whatnot. And then, uh, yeah, like you said, playing with great guys, like, and, and goes back to Coach Shrewsbury too, playing in this offense, like, just creates good shots. And when you get a bunch of really talented players that are unselfish and don't care who scores the points, uh, like, good things are bound to happen for, for good players. Going to go all the way in the back row. Go ahead, sir. Uh, Jalen, uh, Adam Kilgore with the Washington Post. Um, 
the unique way that you you play offense, the way you you can initiate the offense by backing down. Um, how how did you develop that? Is that is that a way you've always played? Is it something that just fit with the system here? Like like how did you uh, decide that that's the way you wanted to play? Um, yeah, you know, I think it's just something how I've always kind of played. I just always use that way. It kind of helps when little guards try and get underneath you. Um, I could just turn my shoulder and you know look over them and see the floor a little bit better that way. So um, I just kind of try and use that as my advantage. Up in the front row, uh, Dave Jones from Penn Live and Adam stole my question, so I'm going to try to ad lib on the fly here. Um, going back to City Rocks in those days, uh, I was talking to some people from back in, in Albany and back in those areas in Rochester about how that you you developed that game, but it 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 sounds it looks like an old man's game, and I'm sure you've heard that a, a bunch of times. Do you understand that, that it, it looks like 1971 to people like us when, when guys were actually afraid to straighten up and cross over on people? Yeah, um, I get that a lot. I've heard that a lot. So, you know, um, I love it. It's, you know, it's, it's different now. So some people don't know how to really guard it. And, you know, it's just an adjustment. But, I mean, I believe it's a very effective way to play. I'm going to take a question in the back on Zoom. We have a question from Clay Madison. Clay, when you're ready. Uh, it's Andrew Clay from WTAJ. Hey, guys. Uh, what was being – it's it's fine. I was talking to John Hara yesterday, and he had said, Miles, you had texted them that you guys were doing this for the 2020 team who couldn't get here. Um how big and important was this, not just for you guys, but for the 2020 team, the 2018, everyone else? How, how, how much responsibility did you feel as a team going into this? Miles? Um, yeah, like I said, you know, I, I took, you know, onus on myself to make sure that those guys felt the appreciation and got the, you know, like support that, you know, <laughs> hey, I'm going out there and, you know, this is an extension of you guys. And, you know, me and John talk here and there, and, you know, he's just always telling me, you know, just keep leading and, you know, do the best you can. And we got here, and, you know, we're here to stay. Seth? Uh, yeah, um, you know, being a part of that team was definitely something special. Uh, uh, me and Ma's relationship with those guys is, is like no other. I believe, like, we was a very connected team, and, like, we're still connected to this day, honestly. And, um, you know, we stay in touch with those guys. And, you know, being on this journey and making it to the tournament, I feel like they're still a part of this. And uh, so, like, Miles put me in a group chat with every single player on that team. And uh, it, was just like a, a, it was just like a big family group chat. And, like, they was proud and happy for us and stuff like that. And we feel like uh, they deserve to be in this moment with us. Question in the back, standing. For Jalen and Andrew, uh, what have you been able to learn about Texas uh, with this quick turnaround. I know you haven't had a lot of time, but what can you tell us about what you know about them so far? Thanks. So Jalen first and Andrew. Yeah, they're a really good team. Really good. Um, you know, they really get to the glass. Uh, really good guards. They can shoot it. Um, they're disciplined, and then you know their bigs are really athletic. So we're gonna have to do our you know do our part trying to keep them off the glass, keep our turnovers down, like almost every game. But um, it should be a dog fight, and we're looking forward to it. Uh, yeah, just continuing off that, like their guard play is excellent. Um, have some really good bigs to compliment them as well, get out in transition. And like, obviously, you know, I just throughout the year kind of just watch college basketball. And, you know, obviously you're not watching games like, oh, what if we play them? But definitely a team that I've watched throughout the year that, you know, I've been really impressed with. So we're going to definitely have to bring our best stuff tomorrow night to give them a game and hopefully beat them. Take another call on Zoom and then we'll come to you on the aisle. We have a question from Jeff Nieberg. Jeff, when you're ready. Andrew, I was talking to your high school coach a little earlier today, and he said uh, when he saw that first shot go in, he kind of thought Texas A&M might be in for, for a long night. I know a lot of shooters kind of get in that rhythm when they see that a deep one go in like that. They kind of get the feeling that uh, they might be on tonight. Was that the case for you last night? And, uh, you know, if I don't, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not asking you to rank the, your best shooting performances, and obviously this one in the NCAA tournament is going to be up there, but uh, have you felt that good a lot in your career, and, and what, was, what did that feel like? Um, yeah, definitely seeing that first one go in, uh, you know, and, and 
made me feel good for a couple of reasons. Like, it's my first NCAA tournament game. You know, I, I wouldn't call it nerves, but there's a little bit of anxiousness to go along with that. So uh, kind of easing that up as well. And then, yeah, like to do it on that stage means a lot, like for me, for my team to be able to do it for them. And, uh, you know, it's also like I'm lucky I've played for a couple of coaches that let me take some of the shots I take. I'm, I'm happy you said you talked to my high school coach because I know he, uh, you know, uh, lived with some of the crazy shots that I used to take. And Coach Shrewsbury uh, has kind of let, let me continue with that a little bit. Um, but I hope it's uh, paid off for them. But, uh, yeah, like seeing that first one go in uh, definitely makes me feel good and, you know, kind of alerts my teammates that, you know, when, when they're going to find me, I'm, I'm going to be confident knocking it down. Okay, now we'll go to the aisle. Thanks for your patience. Montre Dave, Daily Texan. Miles and Seth, um, y'all have played against Marcus Carr before when he was at Minnesota in the Big Ten. Do you, uh, what are some of your guys' thoughts on his game and what you guys are going to have to do to make him um, have less of an impact on the game tomorrow? Start with Seth and Miles. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, uh, Marcus Carr is definitely a very good player. Um, you know, played against him a few times uh, my freshman year. And uh, I believe he's a, he's a he's a strong guard as well, and uh, he he can shoot the ball, he can score the score the ball uh, pretty much every way, and um, you know he try to get his teammates involved as well. So I feel like he's a he's a great overall point guard, but uh, I feel like you know we contain him, then uh, you know we could do a good job with him. Go ahead, Miles. Um, yeah, Marcus Carr is a great player, three level scorer. Um, like Seth said, strong guard, gets to his spots well. You know, we're going to do our best to try to contain them. And, you know, I mean, great players, you know, they, great players make things happen. So we're just going to do our best to try to contain them. You know, on the left side. Uh, Jalen, just wondering what your, your first impression of Andrew was when he joined the team, when he got in the gym with him, and, you know, how quickly it took for you to realize this guy could shoot. Yeah, um, I actually played against Andrew earlier when I was at Siena and um I knew then like go remember him from the scouting report and that he could really shoot the ball but um actually seeing him in one of the workouts me and him were actually shooting partners in one of the drills and we won the shooting contest and I didn't make many shots but Andrew made a lot of them so I knew he can really shoot it so I mean I, I just have to define this guy like throughout the game um I see him working on his game all the time and you know he really puts a lot of time into his jump shot other questions out there? We have five minutes left in this session. Up in front row. Dave Jones from Penn Live. Jalen, are you aware that the field of 68 is now marketing booty ball t-shirts? <laughs> and are you going to get a part of that? I am aware of that, and uh, hopefully we can set up something with NIL of that. It, it, it's funny. I'll take it. Anything else out there for our student athletes? Thank you very much, guys. Best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Again, the Penn State uh, locker room is open until 435. We'll have Coach Shrewsbury up here shortly.
Pleased to be joined by uh, Penn State head coach Micah Shrewsbury. Coach, your opening uh, statement on tomorrow night's game. We're we're excited to be playing again, and um, you know that's that's what we've been doing just just playing together, and having fun, and uh, we get a chance to play another game tomorrow. Um, in that game, we play a really good opponent. Texas is one of the, the best teams in the country um, on both ends of the court. Their, their defense causes a lot of problems with the amount of turnovers that they force. Um, their guards are as good as any in the country. And, you know, it starts with, with uh, Hunter and Marcus Carr um, and Allen. But then, you know, when, when Jabari Rice comes off the bench, you know, he's just as explosive. So um, we'll have our hands full defensively. Um, trying to slow these guys down. Um, they got into a rhythm yesterday and, and really did some good things on offense against Colgate. So we'll have our hands full, uh, but it should be a great battle, and we're looking forward to playing another game. This time we'll take questions in the back standing up. Please give your name, affiliation. Thank you. Hey, Mike, I'm Mark Brennan of Lions 247. Uh, at Big Tens, you had multiple opportunities to play on CBS. TBS last night, CBS tomorrow. What has that sort of exposure, do you think, meant for a team that doesn't always get it? And what's it been like for you to be able to interact with the, the personalities who you probably, uh, you know, Raf and some of those people growing up, I'm sure you watched a lot of them. Thanks. They, they do such a, a great job with this tournament of, um, you know, the games are on everywhere and all, all the channels that they're on. But you know, when you get a chance to play on CBS, you know, it's easy to find, I guess. Uh, it's one of the first first couple channels that you scroll by. Um, but this, this is this is a blast. And, um, you know, it's, it's cool for our guys to get this experience. It's great for our program uh, to get this exposure, uh, for a lot of people to see it. And, you know, hopefully we're opening up doors for um, – potential future Nittany Lions, uh, but also for the school, for, for you know, uh, the common student that sees us and says, man, that looks pretty cool. Like, I'm going to check Penn State out, right? Like, like, maybe there's kids that are watching this that um, end up coming there or applying there or, or want to come there just because they see what we're doing or they're seeing what wrestling or football or these athletic teams are doing and it opens up their minds to what Penn State University can be so uh, we're proud to to represent Penn State in the right way and to be able to do it on CBS is is pretty cool I wish um, I wish Jim Jackson could play for us tomorrow we'd be really tough to deal with gonna go in the back row coach on our left yeah Mike uh, Adam Kilgore with the Washington Post um do you remember the first time that you, you watched Jalen Pickett uh, play, and, and what did you think of his style then? It's such a distinct uh, way to play. Yeah, the, uh, the first time was, you know, when I got the job, um, watching him on, on uh, the Internet, trying to, you know, pull up tape, pull up film as we are recruiting him. Um, you know, they played out a lot of pick and rolls early on when he was there, so – um, his vision was what stood out as a passer. He was such a good passer, and you could see that. That really stood out to me first and foremost. And then the more you talked to him, you understood why he had great vision because of his ability to see the game, his ability to think the game. Um, I've said it multiple times. Like, we lucked into him being able to score in the post. Uh, we didn't utilize him in that way until – midway through the season last year and it just kind of happened organically and then I was like huh hey dummy why don't we do this a little bit more because he's pretty good down there so uh, I'm glad it happened uh, because it's it's really helped us out we're going to take a question on zoom and then we'll come up to the front sir we have a, qu a question from Andrew Madison Andrew when you're ready Hey, Coach Andrew Clay, WTAJ. Uh, I, I wanted to ask you about uh, – we've talked a little bit about this being the, the D3 player as a kid. I know you've been in this um, situation before with you were at Purdue. You've been to the dance. But um, 
how different is it now to be the guy that's the head coach at the tournament, the guy that's winning, the guy that's going through the crowds, and the guy that everyone says is the most brilliant player because Andrew Funk hits eight threes? <laughs> that is exactly true. Um, I'm still a, I'm still the same guy I was when I was playing in Hanover. Uh, yeah, there's there's no difference in to me. Um, I just get a chance to coach really good players, and but it, it's fun. I, I'm enjoying it. Um, <clears throat> but you know, I'm trying to do this for our guys, like because I want them to experience some of the things that I've experienced. I've had some great experiences in the NCAA tournament. I want them to be able to experience the same things. Um, but more importantly, like it's cool that that my family gets to be a part of this. Right? They've been through a lot. And like you know, as you're as you're working your way through coaching, um, you know the ups and downs of what happens, like packing up and moving a bunch of different times. Um, you know, as we move up the ladder and going from Division three to other Division three to Division one job and the NAI job, like they've been a part of this every single step of the way. So I'm glad that they get to experience this and, and go on this ride with us. Got a question on the aisle? Tyler Miller, Daily Collision. Um, Mike, a John Rostin reported earlier today that Penn State's preparing to make a significant long-term financial commitment to you to stick around here at Penn State. Can you just speak to that report a little bit, and have you had some of those conversations with, with Mr. Kraft? No, we, we haven't. Um, he knows, like, that I'm just focused on our team. So uh, he doesn't he doesn't really bother me with anything except for – congratulations and cheers and loves what we're doing. Um, you know, when the season ends, you know, I have time to think about things like that. But um, right now, like, I got my hands full with Texas. And, and how are we going to guard Marcus Carr? I've been on the wrong side of some Marcus Carr um, scoring outbursts when he was at Minnesota. So once we crack that cold, then we can think about other things later. We're going to take another call and a uh, question on Zoom. We have a question from Ron Snyder. Ron, when you're ready. Coach, obviously you guys hit a lot of threes in this past game. So how do you make sure that your defense is tight if the shots don't fall as quickly in this in this next game? You know, for us, we've we've played through our defense recently. I think that's where a lot of our turnaround has come. Um, we've become more of a team that has a defensive DNA. And that's helped us win. That's spurred us on. We've had games in this stretch where we haven't made shots. And we've stayed in games because we are defending. So, you know, it, it's about getting good shots for us each and every time. And we'll take that shot no matter where it is. So if it's a three, it's a three. If it's a layup, it's a layup. And we just want to run good offense so they can't get in the transition. I think that's the number one thing. So... This group has played through our defense. I think early in the year, if we weren't making shots, then I'd be a little bit more worried about that. But um, I think we're pretty battle-tested right now. Going to go to the right side. Question. Hey, Coach. Toby Prime, Onward State. So Kevo was obviously a big get for you before the season started, but he struggled a little bit, kind of played a little stiff. But as of recently, he's been playing sort of his best basketball all season long in sort of this free-flowing state. Um, when did you see things start to click for Keba, and how important is his confidence for this team's success? Yeah, he um, – I think it – I you started to see the turn when we were at Nebraska, and we, we lost that game, but his physicality was different. And the way he went after offensive rebounds and those things, um, I, I think it took him a little bit of time to go through the league – and understand what it takes to be a good player in this league, um, to guard good players in the league. And ever since then, he's really he's really taken off. I think his rebounding's been great. His effort's been great. He's scoring the ball better. He's catching it and finishing. He's putting a lot of time into his game outside as well um, to work on some things that weren't going well for him early on. So – it's a testament to him. It's a testament to the work that he's put in. He's really helped us. He gives us another thread around the rim. And um, there, there was an old coach at, at Miami of Ohio. Um, Charlie Coles was a great, great coach back back then. And, he, you know, he's passed away now. Um, but he played Kentucky once. 
and a reporter asked him, you know, why why his guys were struggling against Kentucky, and uh, and he just said, like, you know, have you ever been face to face with a bear, right? Like you're gonna be scared of a bear. Uh, I think Keba had a little bit of that early on, uh, but then you know he got better. He recognized what he needed to do, and now he's starting to become one of those. Go ahead on the aisle again. Hunter Devitt, Daily Texan. Um, Texas has used an big, two bigs down low to gain an offensive rebounding and rebounding advantage, um, including yesterday against Colgate. What are you all going to have to do to prevent them from getting an edge on the boards? Yeah, it's been a fight for us all year, just playing small and being the smaller team. Um, it takes all of us to rebound. Right? There's Texas A&M sent four guys to the glass like every single possession. And, you know, it was a battle each and every time the shot went up. Um, we got to do the same thing, right? We got great practice. Um, they got a lot of offensive rebounds, but they didn't capitalize on them as well. Um, we got to do the same thing. And, like, what you did or what we did yesterday has no bearing on what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, so you have to do it every single time. You got to turn, you got to box out every single possession, you got to do your best. And then we need some guys that don't have to box out because their man's not coming. They need to come in and help us. They need to clean up some of those rebounds. So uh, we need to have some of our guards have a high rebounding game for tomorrow to uh, kind of X that advantage that they have off. I'm going to go to the back row there. On the left side, Coach, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, so trying to dig in a, a little bit more into Jalen's, like, play style. Um, like you mentioned, it took you a while to, to sort of, like, start using him in the post. But e- even then, like, usually, like, those post plays don't begin with the guard dribbling the ball from, like, 20 feet away. So, like, like how, how did you develop, you and him together, I guess, like, develop that, um, you know, part of his game uh, or just, you know, part of your system and, and – um, what's unique about him that allows him to do that? It seems like he's got a very special blend of, like, both vision and strength, and maybe that's what it is. But, you know, I'll stop rambling and let you uh, – Yeah. T- t- yeah. No, I think, like, you know, we talked about the vision. Also the strength to be able to um, to take hits, right, from a, from a further away. He starts his post-ups at the three-point line or outside of the lane, you know, to get where he needs to get. Right, he's you know I'm sure at the end of the games he's going home sore um, because of the amount of hits that he's that he's absorbing. Um, you know, for us it's it's also about finding who we want to guard him, right? And also looking at how people are playing different things. Uh, so we spend a lot of time going into the game trying to figure out like who we want to guard him. And how do we get that? How do we get to that? And then once we figure that out, and he and I get on the same page, then I let him operate, right? Or if he doesn't see it, then I'll put guys in position to get what we want. So I think that's a lot of times. If you see um, me just standing over there, look like an air traffic controller. I'm trying to help him get to an easier matchup, right? And now he can go to work and do what he does and force people to help or, you know, be able to try and get a, a, a shot close to the basket. So um, a lot of film study, um, a lot of work in practice to now be on the same page with everybody on our team, everybody on the sideline, knowing what we're trying to search out and hunt for each possession. We're going to take another Zoom question, then we'll go to you on the right side. We have a question from Jeff Nieberg. Jeff, when you're ready. Micah, Andrew a little earlier said he's been lucky to play for some coaches who don't have a problem with the kind of shots he takes. Do players like that shoot it like that kind of make you change the definition of what a good shot is? For example, uh, that shot two minutes into the game uh, from 35. Oh. Sorry. Um, Go ahead, Bel- Belzer Barkins. Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't really talk a whole lot about shot selection. Every once in a while, you know, I'll – I might say something, but um, you need guys to feel confident. Right? You need guys to play free. You don't want them looking over their shoulders, worried about whether coach likes this shot or not. Um, I guess my shot selection to them is get the best shot for Penn State. That's all we're trying to do. 
and get the best shot for our team. And sometimes that's Andrew shooting from the logo. Uh, but I also have seen how much work he's put in. So, like, it surprises me when he misses because I know all of the work that he's put in. So, he's just playing free. He's just playing carefree. And I want all those guys to do that uh, because, you know, that way that they're not looking over their shoulder. Like, there's – defense out there trying to stop them that's what they should be focused on not whether or not I'm happy with their shot selection or not so I don't say much about it like my face my face might frown up every once in a while because um, I might not like it but you know you'll never you'll never see me say something to them about any of the shots that they take okay on the aisle on the right side there go ahead sir uh, Connor Krause Onward State Micah you've talked a lot through your two years here about John Harris role and kind of building the program from what it was to what it is now. Uh, I'm just curious if you've talked to him since being in Des Moines and even going home last night, did you think about what it was like riding with him early in the Bryce Jordan Center last year to the point Penn State basketball is at now? Yeah, I I haven't. Not since we've been here. He, he uh, sent me a couple messages when uh, last week during the Big Ten tournament. Uh, it's hard, you know, his, his timing – over there in Spain is a little bit different than our timing over here. Uh, some of our guys on staff were texting, FaceTiming with him and told him, like, jump on the plane and get over here. But I, don't, I think he likes his contract way too much and he can watch our game on TV. Um, like, I, I wish for him, like, he, he – some of the things he did for our program and how he set our culture last year – um, came off the court. Just, you know, he, he wasn't a, a big talker, uh, but he spoke up when he needed to. Um, he, he, he was a worker that everybody saw how much he worked, and then they kind of took to that themselves. So John lifted um, after every game. He was in the weight room. And, you know, Keba's never played with John. But yet – when I go back through after my press conference to go back up to my office, Kevin now lifts after every single game. Um, you know, there's guys in the practice gym getting shots up after every single game if they didn't play. Like, all of those, like, I contribute that to, to John and what he did here and how he led here. Um, so I'm, I'm, like, you know, so happy uh, that I got a chance to coach him. And, like, I feel like he's a huge part of this run that we're on right now. Even though he's not on our team, he's still a huge part of this. So um, we're going to find some way to, to honor him uh, when we honor this team because he really deserves it. I have time for two more questions, if there are any. Any more questions for the coach? No, no, we don't have any questions. Get this <laughs> on the aisle here. Can you talk a little bit about um, the three-point defense that you guys are going to try and play against their guards? Um, Texas shot the ball really well against Colgate, like y'all did against a &M. What are you going to have to do to disrupt kind of their shots on the perimeter? Yeah, I, they were really comfortable yesterday. Um, Colgate went under a lot of screens, so they were able to stop behind screens, get their feet set. Um, and then, you know, then basketball is such a confidence game that once you do that, once you hit one, you start feeling pretty good. And uh, but every game's different. And but you know they shot the ball well in here, so they should come in feeling like we can do it again. So you know you got to break their rhythm early. You got to be able to not give them anything to give them confidence early, right? Can't foul them. Can't give them a layup in transition. Now they see the ball go through the net. Now the first three they take, they're already feeling good. So. Um, those are things that we have to do. Our defense has to be on point. Um, starts in transition. Starts on getting them off the glass, not getting kick out threes. And then we just need to be disciplined. We can't give them those same looks that they got yesterday. Looks like that's it, Coach. Best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.